Okay, everyone. So my name is Dr. Sharier, your mentor for MC for next couple of months. Uh, and also maybe in future, I can also like mentor you that, you know, uh, in terms of the progress in Australia, in terms of relocate, a lot of things I help, of course, during classes, a lot of things I also help by making YouTube videos, also a lot of things uh, personally. Friday basis, usually I'm available. Please write it down. You know, usually Friday basis, I'm available for some, uh, you know, high thought things, actually, you know. So initial days, I would say uh, stay a little bit um, quiet to understand the system, understand Australian things, because time to time we'll tell you. Then in future, you know, we can schedule the calls in the uh, Friday if you have any further inquiries about Australia and this, that, definitely. But time to time, different things I'll be clearing you, you know, as the time progresses. Every class in the beginning, I'll tell you a lot of things, actually. So eventually, you'll get to know everything about Australia, how to settle down there, how to uh, to file work there, how to be a doctor there, actually. All right. So this is the thing. All right. Great. Good to all of you that you all are here actually and and we are going to start the respiratory system in just next one minute um going to start everything actually all right and in the beginning you know if any doctor hasn't mentioned yet like you know through, from which country you are attending this particular uh, session please do also comment us that one like which city and country you are attending if anyone joined later haven't mentioned that one yet please comment in the comment section actually okay let's go um start without any further delay today is a respiratory system theory class but before that some pros and cons about the courses how to proceed these things i'll tell you okay so initially one week there will be you know people are attending trial classes still i think a certain this whole month there will be uh, admissions ongoing so if you're like thinking to take admission uh, feel free to inbox us in that case all right so this is how the things are. i'm turning off my video but you know you can see the screen in that case actually okay so i don't want to distract you for now actually okay i'll be back with my video again okay so we're talking about you know we're going to start the respiratory system today all right so this is the plan actually i hope everyone has joined right now that's the thing great and here we go this is how the things are right now Okay, this is me in the picture, Dr. Sherry, and, you know, I'll be your mentor, you know. Okay, now uh, our classes are Sunday, Thursday live. This is the update for now, actually. Our passing rate till date, you know, we try to maintain. That's how, you know, we have been very popular uh, throughout. Somehow we manage to pass always above 90%, even this November. Uh, guys, have you seen our November result? Uh, have you seen our November 2023 result? Just just uh, quick checking. I hope you know you must be impressed. It's, it's a very high number. Does anyone know how many passed in one month? It's 100. Exact number. Yeah, I mean, we posted with 137. Yes, but ultimately it was 142 because some doctor uh, mentioned a little later actually. All right, yes. And because, you know, it's a trendy song, so why not? All well, my students, you know, they passed, actually. I mean, um, most people passed, of course, you know, in a good uh, marks and the thing. So why not to dance a little bit? So that's okay, fun effort. Uh, so that's the thing. So uh, we'll try our best for you, actually, not only during class days. We also give support during the exams as well, actually. All right. In main exam, I think... Official website says it's nearly 60% or 57%. For us, it's always been over 90%. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So this is our passing rate. Our academy shares medical academy. Our passing rate is like nearly 93% over like seven, eight years we have been taking classes actually. All right. Most mentors, even if you see names, see list that, you know, like most are my students even actually. All right. Friday, I mean, there's a thing written. You must be a little confused about that one. What is this Friday thing is about? This Friday thing is about the overview actually it means um, like this time I didn't post actually, but from the next week, you will get to know um, what is overview. Overview will be something a something small pre-recorded so what is what are the page numbers what to study the next week what i'm going to do you will get to know on the friday okay as a as a video form actually so it will be posted in this group actually you can see that's not a live class nothing but you will get to know these are for i would say there are like certain category of students some of them are like 
very brilliant. They have time for study. So they want to see the page number. So doctor, what are the topic you want to study? Maybe you can see your notes before. Maybe you can see your, um, maybe open the John Murtak pages. So any plans for that? Yes. So that overview will help you in that way. All right. So that's about the overview. Okay, and mock. Okay, uh, so we just started. So of course, we don't have any mock now. But when the respiratory system mock will be taken, it means Sunday after the GIT. Like, so next Sunday, there will be GIT class. All right, so after the GIT class, we'll be posting the mock actually. How mock will be contacted, we'll tell you that time. It's too early actually. All right, so... Uh, it's a it's an open link by Zoom. You can attend actually. Okay, someone asked about how to join the classes. We are coming to that particular part by Zoom. You can easily attend actually. All right. Yes, later you'll be able to see that record. I'm coming to all those portions, guys. Like, let me talk first. Actually, I mean, uh, I'll give you the floor for asking the questions. Okay. Let me just finish that. So passing it. Then these are the classes. Sunday overview and the mock is after the class actually. Now, few of the instructions are like that. You know, okay, you need to open up John Murtak during the classes which is very very important actually okay uh, this is like not for the course deal i mean please if anyone from the recorded batch you know first of all i mean these classes are not for you okay thank you so much all right so please contact later if anyone from the recorded course we also have a netflix type of course actually you know maybe someone is attending from the recorded course you know so please these classes are live this is for the this particular batch so open john murta open the laptop headphone it's like you know interactive by messaging in the zoom chat box okay now during sunday live class what to do okay so this section is important use laptop attend the live class please make sure you know you manage your duty if you are already in duty, try manage your duty. Very, very important. Okay, so this is one of the thing. Then uh, what you can do, um, you can go for uh, watching live plus instructions, actually. Uh, we're already giving you how to attend. So, for example, this is the badge. And, you know, we have dropped the link already in the group. Right. So you can just click that one and join. So same thing every day. I mean, Sunday or Thursday before one hour before the class, we'll be posting the Zoom link and you click the Zoom link and you, you join the class. Is it clear, everyone, how to attend the live class? I'm just trying to clarify that one. How to attend the live class? Is, is it clear at least so far? I mean, how to attend the next Thursday? Is it clear? I just want to clarify that one. Yeah, because some people have the thing in mind that, you know, how to attend it. Okay, so thank you so much. It's a good, nice of you guys. Okay, and keep participating in the Zoom as you already, some people catch the flow. They're smart enough. Links are provided one hour prior to the class. Yeah, this is how we learn. During Thursday class, again, use laptop, attend live, watch the class instruction. I mean, I'll give you more instructions, but it's very simple and easy. Your own group, I mean, this is the batch 55 group, say example, we'll be dropping the Zoom link one hour prior to the class. Okay, that's how the things are actually. Okay, and on the Thursday, you know, follow class on the recall. So today we're going for theory, we'll teach you from John Murtag, we'll teach you a few things from the notes. And Thursday, it will be a recall class, like a question solving class. And again, keep participating in the Zoom actually. If we talk about the mock, we'll talk more about it uh, so mock will be taken on the next Sunday after the GIT class, actually GIT theory class. Okay, so this is how we are going. I think it's too many things one day to digest. Respiratory re overview. Okay, so before going to the respiratory overview, uh, let me tell you something about instructions, actually. All right, so some instruction. How to attend the classes. Is this part is clear? So in your own group, there will be Zoom thing would be, link would be posted. You click the Zoom link and I keep attending the classes actually. Eventually, I mean, those will be the, our registered student, they will be remaining in the group. The remaining will be eventually removed from this group. Okay, so this is how the things are. And these are the class time. Are you clear about the class time, guys? Please let me know in the comment section. If anyone is joined and started getting a little bored, I'm sorry, because we just like giving the instructions right now. Okay, we're just giving the instructions right now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give you the option to ask more questions. Let me give the basic information first. It might fulfill your all the information. So these are the class time. 
Now, important information after live class, how can we see the class again? Answer yes, you can see the class again. We'll be posting the recording um, after 10 minutes. Example, today's a Sunday. So Zoom, it takes some time to process. So on Monday, we'll upload the recording. Is it clear, everyone? So Sunday class, you can get to see on Monday. Thursday class, you'll get to see on Friday. Okay, so it takes 24 hours to process it and upload it. Okay, that was a big inquiry, I'm sure. All right, so that's the thing actually. So this is how, yeah, passing thing we have mentioned already and it was good actually. Uh, talking about some of the plans. So time to time we'll tell you a lot of things about the plan. Maybe probably in next class, it will suit more like, you know, how to start with, you know, so I'll post this part actually. So don't worry. So we have a uh, file and things like that actually, like, you know, uh, initially attend live classes, get ready with John Murtak, just theory and some of the tips, like, you know, how to follow all these things. So here's the basic instructions, my dear doctors. All right. So I'll post that one um, after the class to uh, help you guys, actually. So we have time for that. So how to instruction, how to follow, how to uh, go with books and this, that things, actually. All right. So we'll time to time, I'll tell you a lot of things, actually. Okay, before we start something, uh, something for you, like, you know, is about in general AMC books, actually. So those of you already registered with us probably has received the book links copy. All right. So this is one of the thing. Now, telling you, giving you a basic idea about some books, actually, like example, some common books in MC wall, like example, John Murtak is a common book and MC handbook. These two are official book. Also, there is anthropometry and anthropology. Those are like not very functional book actually even handbook is a 13 year old book so only updated book is john murtak john murtak eighth edition this is a cover for sixth edition i think so don't get confused john murtak eighth edition is the latest one john murtak eighth edition is the latest one actually all right great uh we'll check the routine don't worry as i said like you know let me uh, talk initially and uh, will instructions will come just follow the batch five to five it's very simple following our classes you don't have to put too much thing on the head so don't worry about that one actually all right so that's the thing john murtak hard copy you try to buy it actually i'm not sure from which country you live in bangladesh is available in local shops um, in Australia, you can order for Amazon. In India, Amazon available. Many other countries. And you can also take help from some people in Bangladesh also help selling books. You can also uh, do that, actually. All right. Now, uh, here is the thing. Make sure, but you need the John Murtak. Yeah. So you need the John Murtak in long term. Okay. Now, here with the thing, like, you know, some other things, like sometimes we might take help from the Kaplan books. Uh, there's a one book like 100 case of medical ethics okay so there's another book if you want to write the name 100 case of medical ethics actually all right so uh, that's also a kaplan series so it's for the medical ethics actually all right and kaplan psychiatry is very popular so three books i would say if possible if you can have hard copy that is john murtak 8 amc handbook and Kaplan Psychiatry. These things, if you can have hard copy, it would be really, really good for you, actually. Okay, so for study and many other things, actually. All right, so these are some ideas about the books and things in general. Uh, Master the Board is a medicine-related book, but it's also a very nice one, actually. We have a book in MC Bestseller, but we do have notes nowadays, actually, so you don't, might not need it. It's only available at Taka Office, not for overseas. All right, so that's a few of the very limited books in MC. Talking about QBank, there are AMC QBank. There is, I hope you are writing actually. Don't just stay asleep in the bed. I hope if you have a pen paper, you are writing this important information. So among the question papers, question banks, uh, there's like AMC QBank, there's like a Amedex Bank, there is also Implax Banks actually. All right, any one of them you can follow. That's totally up to you. You will we'll also provide a question bank here for you. I mean, owns the classes will progress after two, three weeks, we'll also provide a question bank, actually. So don't worry, actually. All right, so this is the thing. Okay, uh, these classes are not for course D, my dear. I mean, if anyone from the course D, some people, please, I mean, you can just follow the 
the recorded one. I mean, this is not for the course D classes. And don't message here, please. Actually, message in my inbox later, actually. Okay, this batch is totally for the live. We have a recorded Netflix type course. Those people are uh, separated, actually. All right. Okay, now here we go. Let's go and like, don't, let's not waste much time because some people might get bored later, actually. So without any further delay, are you guys ready for starting the class? Okay, we'll talk about plan time to time, but let's get started, actually, you know, that's the why we are here, actually. Great, guys. Good to see all of you here. And now let's get into John Murtag. And um, before getting into John Murtag, respiratory overview, which we didn't post prior, you know. But normally, these overviews you will get on the Friday. Okay? So Friday, Sunday, Thursday for the live bills classes. This is for the live batch, not for the course day. Okay. So this is how you will follow. Okay, so respiratory overview coming up now. Books, recalls, key points. This is how we need to follow. Next coming up, ticks. These are the page numbers. These are the page numbers here, actually. Guys, you, if you, you just need to follow for now. Later, you know, we'll get into the books, actually. Okay, so for respiratory system, this is the page number. Asthma, we'll open the individual pages and also notes to make you understand a lot of things. So for now, if you, if you just can write, it would be very good for you. Asthma. Uh, 868 COPD 881 bronchitis 397 lung cancer 395. Okay, I'll hold here for a second. Five seconds more. Yeah, have the habit of fast writing. Next, uh, these are very important topic and tested topic. That's why they are here. In generally, respiratory system has even more topics, okay? But these are the areas where my expertise and I'll tell you what comes in the exam. Mesothelioma, 397, very important. Sarcoidosis, 463. Sarcoidosis, 463, very important, okay? Pneumonia, 393. And there is a, a, another one is a tuberculosis. Typical pulmonary tuberculosis, very less tested. Uh, very less tested. So, uh, yeah, latent tuberculosis is that comes in the exam. One more thing about the handbook, actually. Now, see, handbook, they don't divide the things, like which MCQ number is where. What we will do for you, we will find out the MCQ number separately so that you finish along with respiratory system. So these are the uh, respiratory system MCQ numbers. Isn't it cool? I mean, um, Separately, you don't have to read the book. You just follow along with our classes. What I said, it will be more than enough. So respiratory system, these are the, this is, uh, took a lot of time for me to find these things out, actually, which are exactly the respiratory MCQs, actually. So these are the specifically respiratory MCQ. So respiratory and the GIT MCQs are given. GIT is the next week thing, actually. All right. This, this section, you can maybe take a picture for now, I think. Would be good actually. So later you can see after the class, you can see the handbook, some of the page numbers. Great. But uh, in the handbook index, this is not written as respiratory. This is from our side help. Five more seconds to take a picture or a screenshot. Moving forward. Okay. So let's begin and this, that thing. Let's get started. Okay, we're talking about the asthma and we are at page number. My page number is always displayed here, if you can see. So 868, I mean, still I'll tell you the page number. 868 is the page number. Okay, so I'm giving you 10 more seconds to open up your John Murtag. If you have your John Murtag, please open up page number 868. Okay, let me know if you have opened it already. Now we're going to explain and start from here. Okay, I'm giving you 10 more seconds. Some people may be on a run to, yeah. Okay, so uh, it's good to have, uh, because I'm going to use the board a little bit. So we're going to start, first of all, respiratory system respiratory. Now, whenever we talk about the respiratory system, there is two certain things you need to consider, right? Our 
Topic coming up is asthma, 868 page. But before going to the respiratory system, few small basics. Now, respiratory system diseases are related to a lot of things, breathlessness, cough, uh, allergy conditions, many things are included. But in general, we divide them into two half, right? Like, you know, there are obstructive lung disease and there are things like a restrictive lung disease, you know, obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. All right, please focus on the classes, guys. We'll talk about the study partner thing a little later, okay? Okay, so obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. Now, did you know that what are the obstructive lung diseases? Now, I remember as a ABC, okay? I remember as a ABC. So what is this ABC is about? Asthma, then bronchitis, then COPD, okay? So these are the ABC. So asthma, bronchitis, COPD. COPD, again, there are you know, bronchitis and emphysema. So under COPD, you all must be learning past about this. Great. I hope that's clear to all. Uh, some people, I need to give a warning, like, you know, it's not the time to, like, looking for a study partner. You need to focus on the classes. Okay. There's some doctors I can see. This is not the time. Later, we'll keep the discussion on. You can find a study partner, okay? Now, let's focus on the classes, guys. Okay. So, obstructive, these are the ABC. Now, all the other diseases, all the other diseases are related to restrictive. Almost other things are related to restrictive. There are class monitors. I, I think class monitors can also help them a little bit. Uh, would be good. So, let me now focus and tell. Uh, 868 John Murtag requested to open. Great. Now, did you know the basic differences from the, did you know the basic differences of the obstructive and restrictive lung diseases? Basic differences. So basic differences would be obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. What are the basic differences? Did you heard about few things like air trapping? If I use the word, please remember it, air trapping. This air trapping word, is more related to obstructive lung disease. So in a disease like asthma, COPD, the air trapping thing involved. And what do you think? The residual volume will increase or the residual volume will decrease in that case? Talking about obstructive lung disease. So residual volume is increasing. Well done. Residual volume, then increase. If residual volume increase, what you are expecting, total lung capacity increasing or decreasing, then total lung capacity will also increase. Okay, so this is important. So total lung capacity will also increase. So residual volume increase, total lung capacity also increase. And in this case, if you see, this is the basic difference, physiological difference. So residual volume decrease. Uh, so in return, total lung capacity will be also decreased. And in the beginning, what are the names actually? What are the examples? So <clears throat> ABC is the example of obstructive lung disease and the remaining are restrictive lung diseases. All right. The word wheeze, you know, example, <clears throat> clinical point of view, a symptom like <clears throat> wheeze, you are expecting more in obstructive lung disease or a symptom like wheeze, you are expecting more in a restrictive lung disease. I mean, just as a basic, it's not necessary always. The word wheeze, because of air trapping, because of bronchoconstriction, it produces musical sound. So both asthma, COPD, okay, well, asthma, even bronchitis, they all have wheeze. Have you noticed that? The bronchitis also has wheeze. Asthma has wheeze. COPD also has wheeze. Have you noticed that? Because it's obstruction. It's a narrowing. It's a bronchoconstriction. It's a musical sound, most cases. Clear? So this is something. Now, what you are expecting as a key finding, what you are expecting as a key finding, so wheeze is here. What you are expecting then in that case of a restrictive lung disease? Any, any cases for a restrictive lung disease, Initially, we came through the physiological. Now, something symptom-wise. So, who is for obstructive? What is for restrictive? Have you heard about that uh, particular word? I'm sure there's a lot of clinicians. Think about the fibrosis. Think about the, um, no, not that one. Some respiratory sound, actually. If you put the stethoscope, then 
crepes yes so now you people are talking crepes actually so uh, some sort of crepes are uh, expected actually all right some basil crepes or crepes this will be available so i'm, I'm writing it here so that it becomes visible to uh, some of you all right so crepes or we can also say crackles okay like fine crackle coarse crackle so crackle things so crepes or the crackles clear guys this thing so uh, clinical wise these findings you are expecting because these findings are often given in the uh, question as well so if, uh, a a 50 year person who presented with a fine crackles and his total lung capacity is decreased or residual volume is decreased and the person is a oh, person is working in a factory so probably we are going towards a high chances probably we're going towards something uh, like a restrictive lung disease in that case now occupation is it something has to do with obstructive lung disease more or restrictive lung disease more? My quick question. Occupation has related more to obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease. Don't forget occupational lung disease. I repeat, occupational lung diseases are related to restrictive lung disease. So, so mostly, mostly, unless you are working in a very dusty environment, you can develop... Uh, asthma, COPD, these things, but mostly the occupational thing, like, for example, mesothelioma, like occupational other lung diseases, yes, uh, even sarcoid diseases, so many other things can be related to occupations, actually, and more focused on the uh, this restrictive lung disease, actually, restrictive lung disease. So, are you start getting some of the differences? I'm sure you, you do. I'm sure many of you already started getting the differences. So, yeah, I'm just taking a second. Great. Okay, so uh, now coming back to asthma. So I'm just trying to clear that something about the obstructive and the restrictive. We'll come back here if it's necessary, but this is the page number where I wanted to tell you more things. Yeah, so coming to asthma, these are the very important thing that is often get tested in the exam. Risk factor, exercise induced asthma, step up management, um, sodium chromoglycate, but photicasone. What is the difference? I'm going to tell you. And of course, difference with COPD things separately. It will come up again, actually. All right. We'll get back there. We'll get back there. But let's start the asthma as a disease, actually. Now, if you want to define asthma, I'm not, I'm not going for the, that kind of basic. I believe most of you know. Can we use this particular words like it's an inflammatory condition? Do you agree with that one? Inflammatory and so common inflammatory condition. All right. We use a word inflammation. Inflammation are brothers, actually. All right. Inflammations are bye bye. You know, we use the word bye means brother, actually. So one allergy is there. Another allergy is chances. So did you understand the word if I say atopy? Atopy means like, you know, it's like an allergic condition. The person might have other allergy. They, later, they can develop asthma. The person has a atopy in the family. Okay, like someone has, mother has something allergy. Even my next door neighbor, they, one of them has some allergic rhinitis. The kids now develop asthma. So if this allergy thing persists in the family, there is a possibility of chances other family member will develop asthma. So did you understand this point that it's very important that you take allergic history whenever you're going to rule out the asthma related thing clear now asthma you are expecting inflammatory condition correct everyone agreed with that yes and then few of the basic things like you know asthma is a common inflammatory lung condition associated with four conditions now chief complaints are always important so here is a wheat and the breathlessness so wheat this is a musical sound and the breathlessness cough and the chest tightness so you can see here one thing the uh, the breathlessness is the main symptom. Everyone agreed with me? Everyone agreed with me that breathlessness is the main symptom in asthma. Now, a similar type of condition where cough will be the main, main symptom. Another obstructive lung disease where cough will come before the breathlessness, which disease I'm talking about, actually. Maybe they have a barrel-shaped chest as well. All right, maybe they have a barrel. So we're talking about COPD, actually. Smoker's disease, COPD. The cough comes before the breathlessness, actually. 
the cough is the main problem. Overnight, overnight, there are a lot of like secretion in COPD. So when they get up in the early morning, their day started with coughing and clearing the lung, right? Their day started by coughing and clearing the lung. There's ton of ton of cough, you know, in the lung actually because of the, you know, hypertrophy of the glands in, in COPD. There's like so much production of the cough actually. So early morning, they get up, they keep clearing the cough actually this is how the scenarios would be given in the exam and the cough will be told before the breathlessness that's how the CPT and of course a few of the other things over 40 smoking and this all these things would be there and we'll also differentiate with asthma CPT very shortly so don't worry okay moving forward now before going to that one can anyone tell me how to confirm this asthma condition before getting into another next line can you tell me how we can confirm that yeah of course with the stretch we can put we can see like initially we done this wrong guy and the thing but we need a lung function test now let's get into little, little advanced level let's get into little advanced level we're talking about obstructive and restrictive and here is another thing you know, for all obstructive diseases, a pattern like, you know, this it is called FEV1 by FVC. FEV1 by FVC ratio. How we do that? We do that by spirometry. How we do that? We do that by spirometry thing, right? We get to know FEV1 by FVC ratio. Now, expecting what in a obstructive lung disease what is expected in obstructive lungs what do you think guys fev1 fvc ratio will be reduced or fvc ratio will be increased or remain normal and such is a sure shot it will be definitely definitely it will be reduced definitely so you can, you can just put like that so this is will be reduced actually now what is the exact number some book says below 80 percent some book says 75 percent john murtak says 75 if you see the john murtak it was mentioned 75 so below 75 it will be how much for us for us is above 80 percent actually for us it is above 80 percent I hope so there is no one with a smoker above 50. It can be a little different in that case. Okay. Anyway, so, um, and in terms of restrictive, what do you expect as a FEV1 FVC ratio? So if we talk about the FEV1 uh, by FVC ratio, what you are expecting, uh, this thing, normal or increase, well done, very well done, normal, or let's say increase, think in for basic, we can think as an increased actually. So in restrictive lung disease, it can remain normal early stage and later it can be increased as the disease progresses increases actually. So this is another difference with the obstructive and the restrictive lung disease. Now coming and talking about the asthma and the COPD. Now at this point, this is a test, like you know, initially we do spirometry. Now, is there any test to differentiate asthma and the COPD? Because this is the finding for both asthma and the COPD, right? FEV1, FBC, reduce both in asthma and COPD. Now, the test is called reversibility test. Well done, some of you are very talented. It is called reversible, reversibility test. Now, quick question is coming. What we use in this reversibility test? In 20 minute interval, in 20 minute interval, we use a drug to see the, is the lung reversing? Is the bronchuses are reversing? Okay, like like if it's a lung, if these are the lungs and these are the bronchi, bronchioles, bronchi, bronchioles, and it become narrow, right? And you want to make it dilate actually. So you need to give a drug actually in 20 minute interval. So that is like the salbutamol. So we keep giving salbutamol uh, in 20 minute apart to see the reversibility. Now, how much deviation, now this part is tricky, please listen carefully and write it down. How much deviation you are expecting? Say, in an asthma case, it is coming, let's say 60, 60%. If you want FVC, came 60%. Now you do the test. This is I'm telling this is an asthma case. Consider this thing as an asthma case. You give uh, salbutamol bronchodilator, how much deviation you are expecting? Quick question. Now we are expecting, book-wise it might vary, but let's take the Davidson reference in that case, 15% deviation would be there. That means initially say it is a 60% thing, it will become now, right now, how much? 75 then, 75 or above. Okay, so 15% reversibility expected in which case, asthma case. Now, if it is same 60%, in a COPD case, 
are you expecting 15% deviation after salbutamol? Does salbutamol really works in COPD? Does salbutamol really works in COPD? Not that much. So there will be only 2-3% of deviation. Now it will come like a 60 will become like a 63% in COPD. Whereas the 60 become later uh, 75 in asthma. In COPD, this 60% become only 63 so not much. So, so is reversibility test positive in COPD? Quick question for all of you. Is reversibility test positive for COPD? Uh, answer is a negative. It's not. All right. You understand the difference, guys? FEV1, FVC, and the reversibility test. Is it clear now? Previously, it was confusing, right? For some people, it was um, confusing, actually, I guess. So 15% has to be a deviation. 15% has to be the deviation. So... With asthma, 15% deviation expected. COPD, 15% deviation not expected. Guys, I hope it is clear. Later, I will upload the recording. If it is not clear, then you can see it later again. All right. I hope it's not that difficult, actually, you know, after the explanation. So we are at the reversibility area. Now, let's come back again to John Murtag. So these are the major symptoms. Whiz, shortness of breath, cough, and chest tightness. Okay. These are important. And few things like... Uh, you must be knowing why asthma is happening. It's because of the inflammation. Eosinophil count would be higher. And there is a lot of trigger factor. You can see. Just give a tick. You will see it off your own later, actually. Separately, give a tick on the drugs. You need to know the specifically also drug name. You need to see the whole risk factor. Remember one thing, risk factor related. A lot of question comes in MC. Okay. Okay. So these are the things. Now, coming to this particular point, uh, here is a list of drug names, actually. All right. So here is a list of drug names, aspirin, uh, NSAIDs, beta blocker. Uh, I remember even yesterday, one of our colleagues, even she's a doctor, but she accidentally took NSAID for dental pain. Forgot that, you know, she has uh, asthma, actually, and it aggravates tremendously. So mistake can happen, but... Very, very be careful with asthma patient giving the NSAID saying actually. Now, coming to one tricky part here, uh, you will be given situation like asthma and hypertension in the main exam. Next, you will see a recall on that one. Now, quick question, drugs like, like we know, AC inhibitor is the choice of drug, right? In a, in a uh, hypertension in in earlier developing hypertension, AC inhibitor is a choice. Now, if someone is having asthma, will you prefer to give ACE inhibitor? A quick question to all of you. Are you going to give AC inhibitor to a person who is already having existing asthma? Because it will aggravate the cough and the cough eventually will aggravate the breathlessness. All right, so that is the thing. So we don't want, because when you cough, you can't breathe. Remember one thing, two things at the same time does not remain open, either the food passage or either the respiratory passage. So when you cough, uh, you, you um, can't breathe actually. So that's something like that. So, uh, so please write also that name regarding these drugs actually. So AC inhibitor, AC inhibitor not given. So in that case, what to give then? ARB is given. Clear? So this will be a next day question in the recall class. This will be a next day question in the recall class. So you can just write it down. AC inhibitor as an aggravating factor. Treatment for that one is a ARB. All right? What, what is the solution? Angiotensin receptor blocker. Okay. Moving forward is a few just pictures. Bronchoconstriction, this, that. Nothing much. And here is the tiny one, like the next page we just moved in. Spirometry value, if you have FVC, less than 75%. Please give a mark on this is an accurate test as well to see the obstruction, to see what? See the obstruction. Did you heard about the term peak flow meter, my dear doctors? Spirometry is a big machine as well. And in your chamber, can you <clears throat> keep a device like a peak flow meter? 
do, do you use it for your general practice? Very good. I'm telling you this thing. This is a very good practice. If you are doing the GP practice, actually, many of you will be GP in Australia someday. After MC1, you can just go through the pesky exam. I mean, after, just after MC1, you can look forward to the job offer. You get the job offer, then just give the pesky exam and grab that job. That's a pesky route. We'll talk about that one someday. All right. So, um, yeah. So if you have practice experience in your country as a GP, it will be much better than in that case. All right. Now, coming to that particular point, peak flow. So peak flow, you can keep the readings and later uh, when the patient came again, you can see the progress. Okay. But gold standard is always been spirometry. There's a bunch of tests test out there. Can anyone explain to me why X-ray name is there in an asthma patient? Uh, in an asthma patient, is there any X-ray finding? Answer is a no, not really. Then why the hell the X-ray chest is there? Is the all test we do, do always to rule out the same disease or sometimes we also do a test to rule out the other disease? What if it is pneumothorax? No, forget about the TB in Australia. I mean, a lot of people are writing TB, TB, TB. You need to understand uh, which country it is. It's Australia. When you think in our country, we know we definitely think about TB all the time. In Australia, we don't. they don't think about the TB. The one test you need while going to Australia, what test? Tuberculosis test, probably. So TB is not common in Australia, by the way. So the bigger risk is to rule out the pneumothorax the pneumothorax, okay? So that's why chest extra is there or even any underlying pneumonia or anything like that, okay? Uh, a few things are given, nothing much here. Okay, here is a line. Uh, this one I will again teach you. So uh, some factor can be associated with, this is one-time tested topic in, us, in, in MC exam. So they give a scenario, then they ask like which diseases can be related to ZERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is also present in Davidson as a even single most box. That ZERD has association 30% cases with a, with a, uh, in general. Yeah, so that's the thing. Clear everyone? So, great. Now, Delivering method of asthma. Now, in generally, I know you guys are talented. In generally, now, guys, it's your turn. What are the some treatments for asthma? Let's say in generally, let's try to add. Let me start with hospitalization, right? Maybe, yeah, maybe not needed. Yeah, so how to start actually? So propped up position, oxygen inhalation, then nebulization, nebulization with short acting bicarbonates. What's after that actually? Okay, in, a, in acute cases. What is after that? Then the steroid, well done. Remember one thing, any night symptom, never ignore a night symptom or never ignore an acute asthma symptom. Don't hesitate to give a short course of steroid. Excellent, you know, it works actually. All right, so this is the thing. Now, these are for something like you can also give, you know, um, more advanced drug other than the steroid in acute cases, aminophylline, theophylline, these things. And if more necessary, you can shift the patient to even ICU, right? So there's a lot of options out there, actually. Now, who can tell me one thing? If you give the drug aminophylline in the hospital, what to monitor? This is the exam question, guys. So you can see a lot of practical questions that comes in the exam. If you give the aminophylline, what to monitor in the patient, actually? The answer in that one, that to monitor the blood pressure, okay? To monitor the blood pressure, actually. You know, if you're giving the amino flame, blood pressure, not the ECG here, blood pressure specifically. All right, great. So this is why, because it's a narrow therapeutic index drug, actually, amino filin, theophylline, these drugs. Now, uh, delivering method when the patient is stable, when the patient is stable, even in acute cases, can we use this device, this spacer? Rather, you know, say example, the patient is calling um, 000, right? This is the code number in Australia for calling emergency, 000. Now, in that case, um, the GP might give ad, you know advice. And what advice would be that? Yes, before hospitalization, try something. So try something with some drug like, you know, short acting, beta agonist, Saba, Salbutamol, or Albuterol, whatever you say. So, how, what is the best method of taking it in that case? The nebulizer immediately. May, nebulizer may not be at the home, but there is a spacer. Now, I'll tell you two things, which is nowadays called 
level A evidence. Maybe uh, you didn't heard it about uh, previously. Level A evidences. Level A evidence, it is called. Level A evidence. Now, spacer equals to nebulizer. Spacer, that's the device. I'm sure you know what is that spacer device. And uh, equals to nebulizer. Almost similar way they get the oxygen. Wow, that's a wow, right? So that is the thing. Even when acute symptoms started uh, and the patient called the GP, in that case, you know, you can use a spacer for some time. You know, so tell, don't get panicked. First of all, use the, your spacer and the Saba or anything which is a combination and give us a call. In that case, don't get panicked. So spacer equals to nebulizer. Another level of evidence, let me tell you, uh, that is oral prednisolone and IV prednisolone. What do you think? Which one is more better? IV hydrocortisone. Truth is, it's it's similar effect. Okay, like we thought, like okay, little IV and this that. Could be a little few seconds faster, but there's a level of evidence that oral prednisolone and IV, uh, IV hydrocortisone has a similar efficacy. So that is the reason asthma, even acute asthma, can be easily treated as home. Okay, use the spacer, salbutamol, all these things, not controlling, take a oral steroid tablet. It's fine. Great. So this is the thing. We'll come to the step up management. Now we are passing through this particular phase of a spacer. You can see the spacer. Quick question. Can children can use the spacer? A quick question. A children can use the spacer. Yes or no? Answer is a yes. Depends on what age group. So example, a four-year children. If you educate the children, definitely he can. Definitely he can. Now, quick question. Below two year, can they use it actually? So th this is have two sizes available. One is the adult size, one is the pediatric size. Now, someone is under two year, he does not know even how to move. So you're not expecting this specific thing actually clear. So below two year, don't expect that. When I use the word children, they, because there is a children spacer available. Okay, so that's the thing. So below five year can with training, I mean, Kids are very curious. Kids are nowadays very smart. So if you educate them, coach them properly, they can. Okay. Now you can see one thing. Uh, severe asthma, lot of type of severe asthma. This thing will come again at the end. Uh, so you can see the interesting, like we always start with the Saba, short acting picagonist Saba. Moderate when it goes, then you can add the long acting Laba. Okay. And on the top, uh, you can use the steroid actually so when a little bit more aggravating you know we, you can always use the steroid uh, so this one i will show you a more better chart at the end of the asthma okay it's coming up at the end actually there's a better slide so don't worry about that talking about the asthma treatment uh, there's a like preventer and there are relievers right preventers relievers preventers relievers so which are called the relievers i mean i'm sure most of you already know it which are called the relievers? Is it the Saba or is it the, what do you think? Yeah, there's a lot of group of doctors available here. So that's why I mean, know you guys know this thing. So Saba is the reliever actually, which is usually used early. All right. Yeah, eosinophil level is also can remain high. Yeah, it is true. Any allergy condition, not only asthma, any allergy condition, eosinophil, because eosinophil or a blood test, we separately we do. We, we can also do allergic test. Yeah, so no worries on that one. So prednisolone main lifesaver. I want to add a story here. I mean, I was taking respiratory training long back in Bangladesh. So that time uh, when the professor was telling us this um, story, uh, one of our, our uh, senior colleague, you know, he was telling, uh, I wish, you know, I could save a patient. And I asked like, brother, what happened? So he said that, you know, um, because we all have some relative from the, you know, village area as well, actually. And some of them are not that educated. So one time, uh, the concept was, the professor was telling, never ignore a nighttime asthma. If anyone called or you get to know, 
um, have an extra concern if it is a night time because a lot of people die because of asthma every year. Okay, so you should not ignore it, especially night symptoms. So why this came? Because the professor was taking a lecture and he was telling that never ignore night symptoms if necessary, give a steroid. So he said that, you know, the relative called and said asthma and he was busy. He said, okay, with the devices I told you, just take it. If it's not working, then go to the city. The next morning he got the news that the person died. So he was feeling very sad because of that, that maybe he could have saved and this, that. Then he realized the mistake was actually, uh, he told us good things. Okay, use the uh, inhaler, use the spacer and this, that. But one thing he misses, yeah, because it's a village area, like nighttime going to the city, they'll think, okay, let's not go. So what drug he missed, do you think? You know, if he just could have told that one, he can even collect it from a local village pharmacy. It's available everywhere. The drug he missed is actually oral prednisolone. Just a simple tablet could have saved the life, actually, because it was an acute attack. And he said, go to city. Technically, he's safe, actually. But... Uh, he could have just said, okay, take another tablet, prednisolone, and then go to the city, correction. Because, you know, these are village people, may not go and may not have ambulance there in that way. So oral tablet is missed, actually. That's why I said, never ignore a night symptom in asthma patient. All right? Remember this one, please, actually. All right. Now, coming to this one, uh, this particular part, let me turn off myself so that we can move forward. Yeah, so it's a main lifesaver. Okay? You can give it in combination most cases okay here is a line for now you can just give a little tick here like c sodium chromoglycate sodium chromoglycate is a preventer okay so as a reliever preventer so this preventer related lot of question next day we'll get in a recall class so you can see and write this line if you have opened john murta we are at page number 873 this is a very popular in mc part one exam okay now you see this one sodium chromoglycate Sodium chromoglycate. Now, sodium chromoglycate, so example, someone is already taking Saba, salbutamol, and it is not controlled. Asthma condition not controlled with a Saba, short-acting salbutamol. Now, what to do in that case? You need to give a preventer, okay, or a something prophylaxis. So, for children below 5 years, what do you think? What is the choice? Is that fluticasone? Normally, you'd have tell the word, okay, um, salbutamol not working probably, we need to have fluticasone. Now, below five years, are you expecting to start fluticasone? My quick question. The answer is a no. Fluticasone is a steroid. If you use it regularly, it will hamper the growth, right? A steroid can hamper growth of a kid. So, below five years, we choose sodium chromoglycate. And above five years, five years or above, we choose fluticasone. Okay, this is the basic. Now, they came up with all, MC always try to trick you. Remember one thing, MC is not like a PLAB exam. MC is a tricky exam. They always try to trick you in the exam. Okay, so here we go. Uh, they give this thing, how to give prophylaxis, I repeat my word, how to give this prevention or prophylaxis in an inhalational route. Now, when they heard inhalation route, okay, this must not be sodium chromoglycate. This must be definitely fruticasone, actually. Sodium chromoglycate may, may not have the inhalation route. A lot of people I saw in the forum, they were discussing that. And now you see this one. Uh, sodium chromoglycate is also available in a inhalational form. Clear now? Next day, there will be a recall class, and I will show you the relevant question regarding that. Like, even in inhalational form, sodium chromoglycate can be used. Clear this one, guys? Next day, we'll see that question. It will be more double clear, but they will be specifically asked this word, inhalational mode, actually. And people get, oh, that means definitely fluticasone by nebulizer and this, that method. Now, sodium chromoglycate also has inhalational root, actually. That's the thing. All right. Uh, great. That's the thing. Uh, there's more drugs. See, there are drugs like leukotriene antagonists, Montelukos. These are also, can, you know, added to the list, actually. All right. These are added to the list. But it would be less relevant for that AMC question answering, actually. You know, we know there's a list of drugs that is used in asthma. All right. 
So that's the thing. So moving forward, moving forward. Now the next important thing is uh, whatever I'm saying, try to copy those actually. That would be more easy for you to crack the exam actually. Because see, I specially trained in asthma. I can take a five days class just on asthma. All right. But we need to be just focused on the AMC related thing actually. Okay. Now coming to next um, important topic. And that one is a uh, exercise induced asthma if you remember those joined little later i mean these are our details and uh, there were a few topics we told i mean these were the topics you know going to cover you know in the asthma thing and in asthma these are exercise induced asthma right now we are in and 874 is the page number actually now there was a question that was asked what is the best treatment for exercise induced asthma so there's saba there is laba and this that so many people used to answer so okay laba uh, are more effective this that now here is a contradicting thing um, about that one let me show you there's a one contradicting thing yeah if you see this one I'm just giving you 10 seconds to read it quickly. I already marked somewhere. So according, this one is taken from uh, RSCGP. Other than John Murtag, I mean, John Murtag also based on the RSCGP. According to some of the latest guidelines. So what do you think is the correct answer here, actually? Uh, the best, they ask, for exercise induced asthma, which one is best? We always, I mean, early days, like uh, three, four years back, we used to choose this answer as a long acting long acting as a best. Then we found this one in the RSCGP guideline. So what do you think uh, is the main answer I should give? If it is asked, exercise induced asthma, best treatment. Sometimes you should write it, guys. I mean, it will help you remember things, actually. So answer is, a, it's a Saba. Clear, guys? So for this one specifically, guys, uh, keep it in mind. Write it here, best Saba, your direct exam question. Clear? You can also use a, a lot of other things in combination, like see, you can use the LABA, you can add Montelukast. See, any respiratory problem happen, we somewhere use the Montelukast. It gives a certain type of relief in the bronchus, right? The Montelukast, even in COVID, it was been, even in the COVID, it was been um, issue, right? That's the thing. Yeah. I'll re-show the page. Okay, this is the page, my dear. Guys, testing my sound, one, two, three, four. Is it clear? Sound testing one, two, three, four by this time. Okay, someone asked a nice question I saw in the group. If the patient is already on the Saba, then what to do? Uh, what do you think, guys? Actually, I know the answer definitely. If the person is already on the Saba, what, what we should do? If it is an exercise induced asthma, if it's an exercise induced asthma, you know, we keep repeating it. And, but that's not the answer. We will go for combination in that case, my dear. The best treatment is still Saba, but we'll go for combination now. Okay. So, exercise induced the story is here that, say, example, imagine a boy who is having asthma. Is he allowed to play football? Think in that way. Always try to think something, a storyline, a real patient. Is he allowed to uh, play football? The answer is a yes. Now, how to play football? He's sad. So he, the doctor came as an angel and doctor said, no, you can play football now, dear. And you just take the inhaler properly before your football. Do you promise on that one? And yes, I do. And he's very happy now. And he go start playing the football. So most cases he's using the Saba. Now, what if it doesn't work properly? In that case, along with Saba, you can add the Laba or the, some other combinations are given. Understand one thing, you know, the, up to that, they won't ask you actually. All right. So most cases, what is the best? They ask for that one. All right. The one that is asked as a combination, I'll tell you. Yeah. So exercise into asthma, remember as Saba. If you need to step up, you can give things in a combination. Great. Well done. See, steroid is necessary if acute attack came up. You understand my point? One is a typical exercise induced asthma. The role of steroid is more when acute exacerbation came up. Understand, my dear? I mean, we are talking about prophylactic right now. And there's another version. Even exercise induced asthma person also developed acute 
symptom of asthma. So when acute symptom came up, do not hesitate to go with steroid. Clear now, everyone? I mean, it's not about just with or without a steroid. Prophylactically, I'm using Saba all the time. But when acute attack came up, I definitely need a steroid. Right? Well done. Moving forward, uh, it's a asthma action plan. You know, when you go to part two, you will need it even more. Asthma action plan. Okay, using meter dose inhaler. Okay, good. I mean, already mentioned. Yes, last but not the least, we, know we are at the, like a, one of the latest. So level evidence, uh, page number 877, level evidence is pressure versus nebulizer, same effect, level evidence. Okay, some uh, dangerous symptom of asthma. So I put it here, your book does not have it actually. So you can take a picture of this one. So acute severe asthma assessment. Okay, so they will give you these vitals in the main exam. So you will be needing it actually. Okay, please focus on this part right now. Very important. They'll give you the vital. You have to understand this is an acute severe asthma or a light threatening asthma or a near fatal asthma. Okay, that's the thing. Now, how we look into that one? First of all, we look into the patient symptom. It is mentioned patient unable to complete a sentence, means patient is already in severe trouble, patient is having severe asthma, and then you just not check the vitals, respiratory rate is high, and uh, peak flow meter is showing, you know, this is the reading. So you very easily understand acute severe asthma, and you just give a treatment of acute severe asthma management, like oxygen, nebulization, uh, then drugs in a combination, this, that, right? That is how we can give that one. Next coming thing is a <clears throat> life-threatening asthma, even more dangerous, even more dangerous. All right, now how do we understand? See, you can see the saturation now below the 92%. So here the saturation would be above 92%. So acute severe asthma, still in things are in control, but saturation below 92 is not a good news. Anytime, remember one thing. Uh, I hope we all gone through COVID. And during COVID, we learned one thing, that is this saturation thing. This saturation thing below 92% is never going to be a good thing, right? So this saturation 92 is a uh, very important parameter. And silence is this, that. So you need a lot of things for life-threatening asthma, actually. Okay? If it is a life-threatening asthma, definitely you need to send the patient to ICU. You need to send the patient to the ICU. Some people I can see still sitting in a bed, one step towards failing. I'm telling you guys, you know, uh, I'm, I'm as a sweet as a person, but sometimes maybe you might find me <laughs> a little tough as a teacher. Those people are attending the class in from the bed by lying. You know, my prayers are never would be with them. Okay. I mean, even God will not help them. I mean, I'm for sure. I mean, how can you expect that, you know, you are almost sleeping and sitting and trying to, uh, yeah. So that's the thing. All right. Now, a lot of people just get up after that one. All right. So that's the thing. Now, uh, the last but not the least from here, there was a question, uh, something it was like that. It was mentioned something like that as a uh, Indication of mechanical ventilation in asthma. Indication of mechanical ventilation of asthma. Indication of mechanical ventilation in asthma. Now, anyone can tell me that one. Is it the saturation or what do you want to add? It's very important this type of calculative question does come. Okay, someone says saturation. What saturation then? If I'm agreed with you, if it's saturation, what saturation then? Okay. Now, let me uh, clarify that one. If we talk about the saturation and this, that, you know, below 85%. Saturation below 85% is a indication of mechanical ventilation. But there was a separate question that came in MC actually. That is type two respiratory failure. Now talking about type one and type two respiratory failure. Have you heard about these things? Respiratory failure, type one, it is only called hypoxia. Respiratory failure, um, failure, type two. So in type two respiratory failure, you know, it's just hypoxia. 
but also there will be hypercapnia. Did you remember this? So this hypercapnia, please also include in the mechanical ventilation. So hyper, there was a question in past, this hypercapnia is a clear indication that patient need mechanical ventilation, clear. And now I'll show you that from the chart in this slide, if you can see now, those are using mobile, like see, you can see these things very small. So that's why I'm asking for a, that's why I'm asking for a, uh, laptop next step or a desktop or laptop like so that you have you like to see movie in the cinemas or you like to see movie in your mobile give an honest answer you like to see a movie in a mobile device or you like to see a mov movie i mean in a cinema so definitely the answer would be in the cinema i know it reaches her more clearly so same thing if you're in a mobile device you are hearing so mostly you are just hearing so you know, this is like a hand-eye coordination to memorize things, actually. So if you use a bigger screen, you'll remember more, actually. Please remember this word. Time to time, I'll tell you. So raise partial pressure of carbon dioxide. This is required mechanical ventilation. This is the exam-tested question. Even it came last year as well. Clear, everyone? Yeah, IMAX, right? Huge cinema screen, yes. Tablet, I mean, tablets is still okay, but not that best thing. I mean, not for regular study. It's okay. I mean, sometimes you can come in class, but for regular study, tab is not. Nothing can be more better than a, a laptop or a desktop for working. We'll talk about productivity in cardiology class someday. How to improve productivity. There's so many students, like, you know, they start following um, some of the tips lifelong, which I tell you, actually. Yeah. Great. All right, guys. So this is the thing about the uh, this particular section, how question can be. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm more taking the classes exam specific. Okay. Now coming to the thing is a rule of six. Ready for it, guys? Guideline for spacer using with a rule of six, actually. So how about this rule of six, actually? So asthma six years or below. Below six years, you know, you use six puff actually. We know like spacer is used in a 20 minute interval. So below six years, we use six puff. Now question is, if it does not improve, then what? Question it will be in the main exam. You try the salbutamol whose age is four year. You started with six puff salbutamol. It does not work. What's next? Will it be six puff or will it be? 12 puff in that case. That's the question. So repeat 6 puff again in 20 minutes. That is the question. Repeat 6 puff. Uh, yes. Now the same question, say example, I mentioned as a 6 year or a 7 year kid now. Initially tried, started. See, remember one thing. Initially always is 6 puff. Now after that, after that, in a 7 year kid, the second round, after 20 minutes, will it be 6 puff now or will it be 12 puff now? All right. So answer is that way. Forget about the 8 puff. We haven't seen the 8 puff coming in the exam in that way. We have seen 6 puff and the 12 puff. Also, there is another guideline called RCH guideline. I'll show it to you now, actually, like a double evidence. So then 12 puff, actually. Now I'm going to show you that particular evidence here, actually. So... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here here is that line we're talking about. So this is taken from the RCH guideline, which is a very good guideline for the kids actually. Okay. Starting asthma salbutamol as a six puff, if it does not work then keep continuing with a six puff. So six puff if below six years. 12 puff is if it's a more than six years. 12 puff is more than six year or exactly six year, whatever it is, it is 12 puff. Just write this line. Write this line. We'll have a lot of questions next day. It will be cleared next, actually. I, I think unless seeing the question, it will be difficult. All right. Yeah, I think I will clear next day. I think, you know, you're not ready for this rule right now, actually. For now, just write it down. It will come in a question in the next day. I'll make you understand. Just write this line down. Six puff if below six years. Twelve puff is above six years. Just write it down, actually. 
Initial is always six puff for every of these cases. Initial is always six puff to start with. The game begins in the second round. The second round, whether to start the six puff, whether to start the 12 puff. That's the game. Okay. The game is the second round. Clear now? The game is second round actually. The first round is always six puff. Doesn't matter. Okay, so here is the thing. You can write those line, that particular line here. Below 6 here, 6 puff. Above 6 here, 12 puff. I'll tell you next day with that question, it will be crystal clear then actually. But all these things I'm telling, I mean, when to use 6 or 12 puff is in the second round after 20 minutes. All right. Okay, so as my children, as my children, there's few things are given using the spacer. So, yeah, even two to four year you can use sometimes. Yeah, see, but MDI puffer alone, I mean, simple simple inhaler, it's it's difficult. But even with the face mask, even under two year you can use. But it there has to be face mask, like a rubber thing, face mask. You can use it with the face mask below two year. But if only meter dose inhaler using, it's quite a difficult. Okay, so these are the few informations. Now, the one which we are talking about, the step up management of asthma. This is the last section in the asthma. We started most cases like a... Uh, okay, before that, I want to add something. This is a handbook question. You will find that question in handbook. See, you must be heard just confirm me honestly in the chat box. Have you ever heard some people are telling, yeah, we don't have really asthma, but it's just seasonal. Sometimes I feel like I feel a uh, little breathlessness, but it's still there is asthma, right? So can we consider that condition as a occasional asthma? Maybe some, some people already, you may have it or your relative may have it. Yeah, I don't need inhaler other time. But you know, sometimes it just came up in that particular season or some year it never came up. So we just, that time we consider a treatment. So it is called not even seasonal. Seasonal then every year is coming up. So which is under the surveillance then. Some season it came up, some season it not. So it is entitled as occasional asthma. So give another headline, maybe in that blank space, right? Occasional asthma. Now for occasional asthma, what is the treatment? Occasional asthma, you treat it with occasional salbutamol. Occasional asthma, occasional salbutamol. Clear? Occasional asthma, occasional salbutamol. Uh, that's a good question someone asked. Is asthma in childhood? Yes, can result actually many times. Yes. Many asthma when they grow up, because initially it can be because of allergy, right? So grow up then. And Vice versa, have you ever heard this kind of condition? Someone goes to Australia, then they develop hay fever, and now they are also having breathlessness problem. My cousin is a like in living example of that one. It happened. I mean, many they got hay fever, and if you go to the over-the-counter shop in Australia, so many hay fever. So be our especially during spring in Australia, use a mask. Yeah, you can get allergy. I mean, oh, I don't have any allergy in life. Okay, if you're in Australia, you can. It's a different whole, different country. And so many different plants. Yeah. Now, coming to the step up management. If it is a attack in six to eight weeks, that means like a two monthly one attack or something, you know, you regularly have to take salbutamol. Two monthly like a six to eight week apart attack, regularly salbutamol. Now, make it more frequent. Below six weeks apart, below six weeks, now you're having this issue. So example, now you're having monthly issue. Previously, like a two-monthly issue, now like a monthly issue. Now, only Saba is it enough? No. With Saba, now I'm adding combination like a ICS. See that? Now I'm going for a combination. If like a monthly interval things are happening or less than six weeks, I'm going for a combination. Now, if it is even more dangerous, now you are kindly having like a weekly symptoms actually nocturnal asthma more than one per week so and symptoms most of the test that means it's a uncontrolled asthma now what do you see this oral prednisolone came up clear so these two continues along with that new one is added clear everyone 
let me know if it is clear. So as per it considered and combination goes on, how we'll crack this thing in the question, we'll see the duration of attack. Is it a two monthly happening? Is it a below six weeks happening? Is it a below six weeks happening? Or is it weekly happening? All right. So it depends on that one, you, you give the treatment. Depends on that one, you give the treatment actually. So for example, six to eight with apart, Saba. Then six, again, less than six week apart, Saba and ICS. So you give in a combination. If it is a severe, how will you understand it is severe? When it is weekly attack. So see, two monthly, like just telling as a rough actually. Two monthly attack, monthly attack, weekly attack. Yeah. Yeah, this type of question that comes in the exam. Next day you can attend the class to see because next day it would be only questions in the classes actually, all right? Great. So this is the theory. So I'm just trying to do a combination, my dear. Yeah. Yeah, they give exact weeks. Yes, they will be like the person suffering for, and this, this, thing, this thing is happening uh, regularly per week and the person is having night symptom for last one month. If you want the exact word, this is that exact one. The person has is having nice symptom um, for a month every week. So what to give now? You need to give oral prednisolone. And the person is taking salbutamol and ICS already. So they will ask you what to add oral prednisolone. I said that, that easy, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's easy. And please write this line as a prophylaxis. This will be helpful for the next day. Prophylaxis, sodium chromoglycate up to five years. Fruticason, if more than five years. Sodium chrome glycate up to five years, fluticason more than five years actually. It is for the, the another for the profile axis. Great. See, everything needs practice. Just listening one time, things will not be clear. That's why study partner role and this that thing came up actually. Okay. Now, last but not the least, uh, yeah, drug-related thing, you already confirmed. There's another topic called uh, aspirin-induced asthma. So just keep it in mind. They can have some cross sensitivity, you know, with NSAIDs, yes, NSAID-induced asthma. They can also have nasal polyp in NSAID-induced asthma. Just, just remember that one. Last but not the least, like before leaving the asthma, I mean, the upcoming could be the COPD. Uh, if you want to just know the differences, if you want to just know the differences of an asthma and the COPD, few things I think we already know. I mean, both are obstructive lung disease, both having residual volume reduced, total lung capacity reduced, because both are belong to obstructive lung disease. Now coming to the point, what are the differentiating point? Now the differentiating point would be here is asthma is a below 40. Asthma often diagnosed in early childhood, correct? Which wherever in COPD diagnosed in later life, like a smoker, like a smoker who is smoking for a long time, they develop the COPD actually. If I ask you, what is the main symptom for asthma? Is the breathlessness main symptom or the um, cough is the main symptom for asthma? We already mentioned breathlessness are the kind of main symptom. Breathlessness are the uh, main symptom in asthma, like, you know, but in COPD, cough are the main symptom actually. This is from the clinical parts actually. All right, so this is the thing. And Last but not the least, very, very important is a reversibility test. Reversibility test. Already mentioned, reversibility test, uh, like FEV1 FVC normally in obstructive lung diseases, it will be below 75. Say if it is a 60, so in asthma, how much deviation you're expecting? At least 15%. Okay, reversible. So if it is a 15% reversible, we call it reversibility. So we can say asthma, reversibility, positive. Re uh, COPD, reversibility is negative because only 2 to 3% deviation would be there. Okay. Name one drug that is um, works very well for COPD because we have been talking everything about asthma. Salbutamol works really well in asthma. Later, we can use steroid very well in asthma. So name one drug that works very well for COPD. Anyone? Something anticholinergic? Yes. This aminophylline, theophylline. And so this anticholinergic thing is a preferred in COPD cases. Clear? And another thing, in COPD cases, they will uh, ask you that what is the appropriate next step in the management? Okay, next day we'll see that one. Appropriate next step in the management in a barrel shaped chest person develop wheeze and the person is a smoker for a long time. Okay, so in that case, what to do next? So you will find the oxygen therapy. 
and also there is some drug names are given which one appropriate next step in the management so which one do you think is ideal in that case? In COPD, please remember the oxygen therapy is very, very important. In COPD, even in asthma, it is important too. But in COPD, it's very important. Now, a quick question is coming. Is it a high flow oxygen or a low flow oxygen? I guess most of you know that even from MBBS. So in COPD, it's a low flow oxygen actually, you know. So that's the thing, differences actually, asthma and the COPD. Is that clear, everyone? I hope it's that because we need to move forward to some more thing. Now, talking about a little bit about the COPD, talking a little bit more about the COPD. Yeah. So long smoking history, barrel shaped chest, and if you on FVC, reversibility negative, what is your diagnosis? Long smoking, barrel shaped chest, this is how... I'm just giving a clue. So this is definitely a COPD. The question would be much more complex. I'm just... Keeping things little easy for the first class, actually. So that's all. Nothing else, actually. Uh, are you expecting any chest finding in a COPD? Are you expecting any chest finding in a COPD? Asthma, we don't. But in COPD, uh, it is a yes. All right. Now, let's go with the finding of that one. Now, these are the finding in a COPD cases. Increased bron bronchovascular marking. Don't you think these bronchovascular markings are a little bit more here? Yes, it is. All right. And also barrel shaped chest. So, these two help you thinking this is probably a case of sense. So, hyperinflation. Yes, well done. But also, please check that increased bronchovascular, these markings. All right. So well done, guys. So this is for the COPD, a few things. This is for the few things about the COPD. And the treatment I already just now told, but you know, let me uh, just show it a little bit. Um, yes. From the John Murtak. So John Murtak, um, it is also given here. Um, these are the key lines. We have, we, this is in the page number 881. I already also mentioned something, use SMA notes actually, which I'm going to show you now that how to use our notes actually. All right, I'm just taking a second. I just take away my screen, so don't get panicked if screen does not showing anything. Let me at least be there actually. You know, small kids sometimes they don't see <laughs> their parents, they start crying. What is this condition is called? You know, small kids suddenly they don't see their parents. They started crying. What is this condition is called? It is called separation anxiety, right? It's called separation anxiety. Okay, I'm just bringing a note actually, okay? So that's why. Now, those of you who have received our notes already, I know a few people left. Um, yeah, so this is how it's a big. Don't get afraid, it's so much. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's a good thing that, you know, in MC world, like there is nothing like a ready made note like that. There are question bank things some people develop, but that's a whole different thing, actually. And, but this is a new notes and in you know, everything what you need for MC, you can always follow alphabetically. So let me turn off myself for now here. Now, thing is here, uh, when you see these uh, notes and the things, um, you can go alphabetically. Some people, they have their own Google Drive not organized properly. So you can always click this part. Then some people may start with Z. I mean, automatically your Google Drive is like that. You can reorganize by clicking here with a laptop. Okay, so that it, it works from the alphabetically like that. See, ethical, a lot of things are given as a... Anyways, now coming to this particular part, uh, we need to go where? We need to go go to medicine part, actually. Yeah, you will get the notes after the admission, definitely. Um, if you haven't received it yet, and oh, even after taking admission, you will get it by tomorrow. No worries on that one. We take 24 to 48 hours to send the notes after the admission. Okay, now it's okay. I mean, let's focus on the class. I mean, we can talk about this note things later, how to get it. We can talk it later. Okay, we are discussing what? We are discussing medicine. So you have to go to AIM actually. Okay, you have to go to AIM and this is how AIM is given. So is cardio going on today? No, right? Endo? No. What is going on? It is respiratory going on. 
So we need to go alpha medicine and then just go to the respiratory. Okay. So example, even see asthma related notice there, right? You can just click the asthma one. You can go to the, let's click the COPD one actually. Okay. So that's the thing. So this is how, you know, that slide I just show you, it's already here. So uh, probable diagnosis, COPD definitely. Then there is a asthma and COPD basic differences given age-wise, breathlessness is in, you know, then cough, then this thing, the differences which I'm, I was telling you, then this asthma and the COPD main difference. Yeah, then how to make a diagnosis, but by lung function test definitely. Uh, you can make a diagnosis and the managements are given. So I wanted to, op I won't open it just to show you the management because in John Murtag it was quite a scattered actually. So first of all, if you are given the option stop smoking, that can be technically an answer. Did you get it guys actually? Isn't it very important for COPD people to stop the smoking? I mean, is your treatment are going to work? if he does not stop smoking. So in COPD cases, stop smoking can be a very, very tricky thing in the exam. You know, you see the question, um, question and the answer is stems, oh, anticholinergic, that's surely the answer. But they, they might ask you, what is the appropriate next? Isn't it the appropriate next is a stop smoking? Do you agree with me, guys? So if that option is there, you, my dear, will pick up the stop smoking option, okay? So they try to trick you all the time, actually, okay? Articular energy will definitely go for it, but before that, stop the smoking. So the drug Saba, Laba, Epratropium bromide, which is the anticholinergic, yeah? So uh, respond to steroid very less, yeah? So more things are given, more things are given. All right, so low flow oxygen, go long for 15 days. So in general, it's given, not everything is required for the MC. That's the thing. So, so first is a, yeah, stop smoking. Yeah, so then, you know, gradually everything is included, technically included, but preferred is a, you know, anticholinergic often actually, you know, in between salbutamol and anticholinergic, it's anticholinergic. Clear, my dear? In between salbutamol and anticholinergic, it's anticholinergic. Clear? I hope that's clear now. Yeah, all right. So you can find these notes in that way. That's all good. Okay, so that was the COPD. And even if you go to um, this one. Yes. Even if you get a lot of things related to asthma here, actually. Yeah. Best initial test and this, that. No, not will certainly, you don't have to go look into, you know, a lot of people have habit. I also used to have that habit. Even reading the book, I look forward what's in the Google, what's in the other book and this, that. So, you know, all things I just organize for you so that you don't have to go and see. Now, you see the major slides which I show you just while I go is all are given there. Right, so that's how that's why the notes and is and before exam specifically, it's very easy for you. Your life would be very easy when you revise these notes before the exam because these are exam specific. You don't have to go through big books and then so quick for quick revision. You can ask any one of them writing as a feedback SMA notes. You know uh, they all studied, yeah. So as far as that available, we follow that one. Even some part of the John Murtag some part of the John Murtag does not have even um, those section. Example, obstetric. You, you try to find out obstetric from the John Murtag. It's not there. So you have to follow our notes in that case. It's totally have to depend on that one. All right. So this is the particular thing. Now, moving forward to the uh, this COPD is nothing much in John Murtag, to be honest. This smoking cessation is the main thing. Um, and if you just follow that note, it, it would be more than enough. Already main things are given. Cough can be main symptom and, you know, uh, bronchodilator test and this, that. All right. So nothing much here. So let's not stretch it. Only only thing you can just see from the John Murtag is a stepwise management in COPD. You see, uh, even with the COPD, this is being mentioned. You see it now, page number 884, my dear doctors. Just as I highlight this line, like a smoking cessation can be the number one priority. They often 
do this trick. Then comes you know, short acting, LABA combination and all this thing, you know. Treat the patient as similar like asthma, but only thing to keep it in mind that you need to use the anticholinergic as well. All right, that's the only thing, you know. Yeah, because it's it's a book for the GP. They wrote it in more details, but for AMC, whatever needed, I already mentioned it to you, okay? For AMC, whatever needed, I mentioned it to you for COPD. It will not give you that kind of trouble, the COPD one. Now we are getting to a point that is bronchiectasis. It is page number 397. Now that's sometimes problem with John Murta. Different things can be in different pages actually. So I'll help you, you know, organizing things actually. Because we're going through the ABC, the obstructive lung disease first. So bronchiectasis is the next thing coming up. After finishing bronchiectasis, we'll take a short break and we'll come back and start the pneumonia after that. Okay, guys, ready for that? All good? Yes. Yeah. Uh, looks like doctors are tired, like, but bronchiectasis, I promise it's a small thing. Bronchiectasis is a small thing. Are you guys too much bored already? I guess I hope so not. Okay. Uh, page number 397. You know, you can always see my page number here. 397. Okay. Coming up is a bronchiectasis. Did you remember the definition, guys? We all used to memorize the definition in pathology or uh, for bronchic disease is to come as a short note. Did you remember? Let me try to remind you the definition. Abnormal and permanent bronchial. Is that line was there, guys? You know, yeah, you are supposed to re read whatever only I tell. Okay, you are supposed to read whatever only I tell. Okay, so that, you know, things become easy for you in the, yeah. Great. No, coming to bronchiectasis, abnormal and permanent bronchial. Abnormal and permanent bronchial, right? Great. Now, talking about that one, so uh, bronchiectasis is something related to uh, related to lung condition and uh, eventually related to abnormal and you know permanent the bronchial. I mean, that is the changes that happens actually. Okay. In terms of the uh, Bronchic disease, what do you expect more? Are you expecting cough more like COPD or are you expecting breathlessness more as like asthma? Is a trick. So whenever you see the question, immediately you'll understand. So answer, you're expecting cough more actually. Now, bronchic disease is something can be related to a few of the other things like a wheeze, coarse crackle, even then clubbing, okay, and this... Bronchitis is abnormal and permanent dilatation of the bronchi and the bronchial. Okay, worse on waking up, similar like kind of like a COPD. So these are some certain features. These are certain features. And let me try to um, take with our note. Okay. This is a book page actually. So bronchitis is an uncommon disease from a chronic dilatation of the large bronchi or bronchial. So abnormal or permanent dilatation of the bronchi or bronchial. This is the main thing. Bronchitis is quite a common in cystic fibrosis as well. Please remember this. Yeah, excess is put on as well. Yeah, that's a possibility. Well done. Yeah, you are correlating good. So bronchitis can be related to cystic fibrosis as well. How it is presented in many cases. See, uh, dyspnea and wheezing is presented in 75% cases. So it's quite a common, looks like dyspnea is, is quite a common here, actually. All right. So this is the thing. So that first thing about the uh, cough thing, you know, it's like this one is more related to dyspnea and the wheeze. 75%, this is more common and can be associated with weight loss. Um, another thing, I know a patient of mine that with bronchiectasis, the person is almost always on, on a steroid, I remember. The bronchiectasis patient always have lung infection, keep having lung infection, keep having breathlessness all, always. Even they came up a few stairs to ask for help, they're having breathing problem all the time and this cough problem. So it's kind of like simultaneous. And 
recurrent chest all the time chest infection they are having actually so doctor don't want to take a certain risk so they are often in antibiotic actually so if there is a term prophylactic antibiotic which in cardiology i'll tell you more about like a lot of conditions like, like before dental procedure we give a prophylactic but prophylactic antibiotic just continues for months after months the disease is bronchitis okay like months after months antibiotic continues that's bronchitis now you will see this abnormal and permanent you know bronchial changes in a ct scan or a mri is actually now here is that page uh, the accurate test is a ct scan the accurate test here is a ct scan you can see abnormal or permanent bronchi or bronchial like you see how much this is a ct scan finding these are too much dilated these are like too much dilated so a high resolution ct will give you and sometimes it is called i don't know how they imagine tram track line so some similar tram track some tram track <laughs> line they have imagined actually all right so as like the copd in copd this is also applicable chest physiotherapy you know i'm sure you have done that one in the ward you know you tap the uh, back of the patient and the extra cough thing came out did you do that personally ever in your life guys do you do that personally ever in your life i'm sure you did the chest physiotherapy tapping cupping and tapping yes okay so that that is the thing okay so test or basic test in the beginning of course you need x ray remember one thing for every respiratory disease we start with x ray okay every respiratory diseases most cases until proven otherwise we start with an x ray clear everyone the initial test for most of the respiratory condition because amc will ask you this kind of question what is the initial test what is the accurate test until proven otherwise most cases your test is x ray clear yeah so that's the thing so here is here will be also extra like next day i mean next week we'll learn about the esophageal condition git condition you see most of the esophageal condition your investigation is barium okay so that is how the thing sir the investigation is a barium for most of the esophageal condition until proven otherwise okay so here's the things are given chest physiotherapy treating as an infection give antibiotics yeah and surgical resection in some cases so that's about the c you know this bronchitis thing that's about this bronchitis thing all right yeah picture creates a lot of impressions so here is a picture here is a picture so bronchitis typically include chronic cough with mucus secretion healthy and such full of mucus it will create an impression in your brain that you have seen a elderly person's picture yeah that's the thing yeah so this thing they are trying to say as a tram track you understand now what is tram track bronchitis okay so irreversible and here's i think some key lines irreversible dilatation or destruction adequate clearance um, inadequate clearance of mucus that's why they start coughing can be related to cystic fibrosis pneumonia chest infections crackle with his sputum clear everyone now about the bronchitis are we done with the obstructive lung disease guys give a green signal please so that we can go for a small break here okay yeah when we will be back uh what to do okay we'll be back and please open up 395 page number open period 395 we'll start with a cancer after that and then we'll go to the obstructive lung disease like very very important bronchogenic carcinoma we'll post the recording in the group my dear doctor so don't worry yeah no please don't leave the class i mean you don't you never know recording might have issues some rare cases this that make sure that that's the thing 
uh, initially i would recommend my dear only read the part i am suggesting okay so this is the thing only initially some people ask me that what to do now initially let's go slow and steady we just, we have to do what slow steady wins the race actually right so initially i would tell you just to follow the classes for initially first week about the extra study extra thing i will tell you uh, later actually what to do okay great so guys it's time to take a break and then we'll come back after the break thank you so much um yeah there'll be an inquiry zone after the class that's the thing yes duration of the break good question duration of the break would be nine minutes okay i'll, I'll open a timer for you so that everyone can come back in time all right So taking a break, guys, or coming up topping is a 300 and uh, page 95 lung cancer or bronchogenic carcinoma. After that, like some easy peasy topics out there, um, lung cancer, mesothelioma together will go, sarcoidosis, pneumonia, Latin tuberculosis. So these are the very important and few other things will be in the recall classes will be covered. So don't worry, stay with us and don't go away. <laughs> That's the thing. And a break would be a nine minute break. See you in nine minutes, guys. Thank you so much.
Hello, everyone. I'm back actually, and uh, let me know if you're with me. Great. Uh, guys, be aware of this uh, WhatsApp groups because uh, some people can be scammer here. I mean, we don't know. I mean, everyone. So just be careful about this thing. You know, especially don't just get into any WhatsApp group quickly. All right. Because and don't um, share informations here. Um, in that way, your WhatsApp number and this, that thing. Please do not um, share this thing unless we ask you to do. Okay. So please make sure that, you know, um, Anything unusual you don't do, especially in the comment section, actually. Yeah, so because we don't know everyone yet. So in the beginning of the, like, you know, this one, I don't know who is like, uh, see, Dr. Shulob and this thing. I don't know even a student or not yet to us. Yeah. Anyways, um, we can do that later, actually. But the study group making and this part, we'll, we'll be talking about these things in coming days. So don't worry. All right. So I'm just taking out the screen just to share uh, the John Murtak thing. And your page number is coming up is 900, uh, 395. All right. I'm going to share the screen now. And you just have to confirm if you can see the screen. And you can uh, always tell in that way. I mean, in army, they use this word loud and clear, you know, because loud means voice is loud and clear means the screen is clear. So please write in the comment section that, you know, loud and clear so that, you know, you can understand that, you know, it's visible actually. All right. And please guys, make sure, you know, you don't um, use your mobile number here because whenever we take the first classes and because we get the highest number of students, but there's always some scammer. They will ask you for your WhatsApp number and this, that. Okay. We don't know the people yet, actually. So just be out of that one. All right. So here we go. Let's go and uh, start the remaining. Yes. Great. All right. Okay. So going for this one, uh, next thing that is coming up um, next is a, our lung cancer, right? Lung cancer, bronchogenic carcinoma. Did you know anyone in your family or friends who has died because of this dangerous lung cancer? Any, any, uh, have you seen any patients or this, that so far? Ah, okay. Great. Okay, no problem. So the title is coming is a lung cancer here. If you think about lung cancer, what is the first thing you will notice? What is the first thing you will notice in a lung cancer? So someone who is recently having a lot of weight loss, elderly, of course, elderly smoker, and certainly, you know, there is weight loss, complaining weight loss, and some cough is there, actually. A smoker is not a big thing, guys. There's a lot of non-smoker. They also develop lung cancer, correct? So that, that is the thing, actually. So the lot of non-smoker, they also develop lung cancer. So weight loss is a key thing, weight loss, and there is persistent cough. With these two notes, let's see from the John Murtak, like what else are the things. So you can see here, so cough is quite a uh, leading from the front. You can also add the weight loss. Uh, because of that, there is a mass or something developed. There can be chest discomfort with hemoptysis. So hemoptysis also came up, but it's not that common for all the cases. And also dyspnea can develop. Your preferred age is elderly 50 to uh, 70 often develops that's that's an age group actually cigarette smoking is one of the very commonest cause of lung cancer now there is no such evidence that vape now these people are using. now how many of you are using vape be honest actually uh, how many of you actually use a vape actually so um, it is not proven actually like you know the Something related to vape. Yeah, it is proven that it is less hazardous 
but vape developing lung cancer not that is not proven yet actually but until proven otherwise think any smoking thing can cause lung cancer there's always possibility and lung cancers are lethal we all know that that lung cancers can be lethal that's the thing so these are few symptoms in the beginning and if you want to order some of the test of course chest x would be initial and in the x-ray we notify that there is a coin lesion or something like that or any shadow is coming based on that one we look forward to ct scan or mri and all these things all right so that's the thing these are some features of lung cancer and this that which has been given here now um let's just do one thing uh, just a second let's just bring our note and try to help you and show you a few things from there okay i'm just bringing my note that's why it's gone just taking one second just to bring out the note guys i'm just taking one second sorry because it is little disorganized in uh, John Murtag, but I'm just trying to help you here. Just one minute. Okay, I'm ready now. Yeah, you can see now, actually. I, I just took out the screen just to share that. Okay, so this note is also there in our note section. So lung cancer and SMA means shares medical academy. Exactly what you need for exam. Okay, I hope it's visible. Now, coming to that part, actually, few things are must learn. Like example, like you'll be often asked about the investigation. Okay, so of course, it's the initially you do an x-ray like learn this basic like this basic is initially we do an x-ray then what's next the next is you know we can do ct scan that's also common and what's next after that is the ct scan is a confirmatory or is the biopsy is confirmatory what do you think guys is ct is the confirmatory or the biopsy is confirmatory answer is a biopsy now, is the answer is always biopsy or answer can be bronchoscopy as well? Now, that depends what is the location of the tumor. If the location of the tumor, if the location of the tumor is in the central area. Now, if this is the lung, you can see this is called the central of the lung, central, near to the bronchus. And these are called the peripheral areas. So, if something is in the near to the bronchus that is central, in that case, you go for bronchoscopic biopsy you know a machine will come up and then it will do the biopsy as a bronchoscopic biopsy if it's in the peripheral side the approach will be from the outside to take a biopsy okay that will be the regular biopsy from the peripheral side a quick question to all of you to see how much you understand peripheral lung cancer show the symptoms early central lung cancer show the symptom early so final answer is a come on guys this is a time to participate so answer is a central lung cancers will show. I mean, guys, I have noticed that those people answer in the classes well, answer in the forum well, they almost always pass. So some of you, those are just sitting, lying and not participating. It's very high chance that you may, might not make it in the finals. Okay, because you don't have that habit of participating often. So it is very, very common. I mean, just an observation, actually, because you are lazy sometimes. This is the thing. Right, so this is the thing that uh, we're talking about. The central produces the symptom early. Peripheral lung cancer produces symptom late because it becomes big, then it comes to the near the bronchus and then, but, but by that time, many times it might spread actually. So that's the thing. Except for one of the cancer, which is even central, but it's very much uh, aggressive and widespread. 
Are you guessing which lung cancer I'm talking about? One lung cancer, which is very much aggressive, which is a small cell lung cancer. Even lung cancer in some of the journals and articles divided into small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer as well. Okay, we'll not do in that way, but uh, why it's so important, like because it's so aggressive actually. And many of the lung cancer associated with paraneoplastic feature. Example, can you give at least one example of paraneoplastic feature that is tested in MC exam a lot? At least give one very important paraneoplastic feature that tested in MC a lot actually. Yes, with Cushing syndrome, it can come with, um, yeah, Cushing syndrome, Horner syndrome. Uh, I wanted to know actually the superior vena cava obstruction. Superior vena cava obstruction or Horner syndrome, these are paraneoplastic features. So often they will give you the feature of something else and you have to clarify and identify this is a lung cancer, right? So that is the thing. So coming more uh, in your... So often comes with breathing problem or coughing and unexplained weight loss. It's not like you are doing dieting, but unexplained weight loss, they get tired, they get chest discomfort, they have cough issues actually. So that's how the lung cancer is started. All right, make sure you don't share any of your notes or anything. You know, there might be major copyright you know, issues. All right, coming to the lung cancer, we were talking about something. Um, if you can see peripheral, you can see in the central. So central you know, you can also say S, C as a S. So central, more symptomatic. Peripheral, asymptomatic. Okay. Central, you can write with S, C, and T, R, A, L. Symptomatic, peripheral, asymptomatic. So away from the bronchus, often a common cancer is adenocarcinoma. I, my not own grandfather, but, you know, grandfather's brother, something like that. Um, we call Nana, him as well, actually. So he's close with us and um, he was not really a smoker, but one time he is having unexplained cough. Later, I, we figured out he started losing weight. So he take consultation and there was a shadow in his x-ray. So I was guessing it can be lung cancer. So what this shadow, I didn't told him yet uh, in that way. I told him, no, quickly go and do and say, is it needed? And I said, yeah, yeah, it's needed. And also referred him to a respiratory consultant. Uh, that time I was like, you know, just, just passed, I think, the MBBS. So thing happened and he um, went to CT scan and CT scan, it was quite visible and evident that there was lung cancer. And he was not a smoker, but he still he developed lung cancer. So can you guess what sort of lung cancer actually he was having? So he was actually having later after CT scan, we did the biopsy. He said that that biopsy experiment is so painful that he might he might rather die because of lung cancer. You know, so just just giving a patient statement that lung because piercing the pleura when you take a biopsy, it is tremendously painful. Okay, so um, as you can see, guys, like in you know, a small cell um, carcinoma, danger squamous is most common. Adeno often hidden, and bronchoscopy is done for the central. For him, you know, it couldn't be done by bronchoscopy because it was in the periphery, so it was more painful actually for him. Coming to this one, this chart is very important. That was is. Um, a different type of lung cancer. You see central, central. So small cell and squamous is central. Small doesn't matter, like, you know, symptom present early, late, it has always been very dangerous. Now, you will be asked questions how. Most cases, they will give you lung cancer scenario and you have to guess it is a lung cancer among many other conditions like mesothelioma, tuberculosis, this, that. You'll be also given question in that way that among the lung cancer, which lung cancer is that? Now, in these cases, in you know, they will give you some clue. If they give you Cushing syndrome clue, can you guess which type of lung cancer is that? I'll give you 10 seconds for that. If they give you features of Cushing syndrome, what can you guess which lung cancer would be that? The answer would be in that case is small cell carcinoma of the lung because it can be related to ACTH. They can also give you SIADH feature. Okay, in that case, you know, you can also think about the small cell cancer. If they give you parathyroid features, a condition which has lung feature and parathyroid feature, which cancer I'm talking about? I'm talking about small cell cancer because it is related to PTH, parathyroid hormone. Okay, so see the correlation. So this correlation, MC will always ask, 
from if you just came from the MBBS level, like this is the, that little level up things actually you need to see. Previously, you might only learn the types. Now you have to, among the types, some correlations you also need to learn. Okay. So adenocarcinoma, as you can see, you know, is related to not linked to smoking, which one of my grandfather he developed, grandfather's brother he developed. All right. And small cell carcinoma as you can see you know yeah these are the finding and also large cell carcinoma others are not that much that's the thing yes pth is related to squamous cell carcinoma so pth ACTH, ad is related to small cell carcinoma two of them related to smoking small small this is smoking or non-smoking related adenocarcinoma clear everyone this lung cancer thing and there can be many lung cancer that can be metastatic right another thing many of the lung cancer like nearby organ it can metastasis to the lungs for example um, skin cancer melanoma there can be metastasis to the liver lung even in the brain so many of the other organs you know cancer can come to the lung part so that's a metastatic lung cancer talking about the paraneoplastic feature these are the paraneoplastic features including horner implanting superior vena cover obstruction now in terms of superior vena cover obstruction i wanted to add something um it can be related to another type of lung cancer like superior vena cover obstruction what is that type we are talking about it can be related to horner syndrome it can be related to you know apical section of the lung Okay, so what is that thing is we are talking about? It has a name actually. So its name is a what is that guys? Its name is Pancos tumor. Pancos tumor. So in a Pancos tumor, T1 nerve root involved. Remember, like this part in the apical side, it involves the T1 nerve root. When T1 nerve root involved, Horner syndrome happens. Okay. Another thing it can happen. This Pancos is in the upper part, so it compresses the superior vena cava. And there can be superior vena cava obstruction. There can be superior vena cava obstruction. Now, if you turn the head into another side, you know, there will be flushing of the face. What is this sign is called? Some of you know, I'm sure. Turning the head and it is called the flushing of the face. It has a name actually. So it is called, yes, well done. It is called Pemberton sign. Great. So Pemberton sign, turning the face, the more obstruction happening and, you know, there's flushing of the face. So this is called the superior vena cava obstruction. Now, it came separately also in exam, not only the Pancos tumor. For Pancos tumor, you also need CT scan to make a diagnosis. Secondly, other than um, this uh, CT scan, um, like, you know, how can you make a diagnosis, like, you know, Specifically for superior vena cava obstruction. Answer is again a CT scan. So some people get confused. How to um, make a diagnosis for the superior vena cava obstruction of the Pancos tumor? So some people get confused on that one. They are talking about dye and this that, but no, it's a, again a CT scan. I checked with some of the website. It was not present in the book actually. So uh, Medscape is a good good website, guys. Medscape is a good website actually. You can check that one. All right, great guys. All right, next coming. So, so these are the sphere. In short, sphere. These are the mammon exactly. Superior vena cava, pancos, horner, endocrine, which I already show, ACTH, ADH, and hoarseness of the voice. In lung cancer, remember one thing. It is a very popular question in ENT. Is this hoarseness of the voice because of the lung cancer or esophageal cancer or laryngeal cancer? Very interesting. I know we'll see that one, how we differentiate in future. So here is the final thing. Uh, important for a small cell carcinoma often this thing is tested that ACTH can be related to Cushing and ADH related to SI. These two features are often given. These two features are often given. And for Cushing, if you remember this chart from the Davidson, like moon face, buffalo hub, hypertension, osteoporosis, back pain, bone pain, yeah, stria, all these things are related to Cushing. They'll give you features of Cushing and some lung symptom they're asking. It can be small cell cancer. And SIAD is some of the features like there will be concentrated urine because excess if SIADH mean ADH is high. ADH function is what? Reabsorption, more water. So if more of the water reabsorbed, there will be concentrated urine. By the way, SIADH I will teach you separately in renal system. So don't worry about that one. So this section SIADH is also present in our medicine renal note actually. You know, that slide is belong to that. Okay. Last but not the least, we are talking about lung cancer and the very popular thing that comes in the ex exam is asbestos related, they will ask you as well. 
As I mentioned previously, just let's do a quick summary. What type of question can be tested from the lung cancer? First, that would be they'll give you scenario and you have to make a diagnosis. Is it a lung cancer or a mesothelioma or a TB or pneumonia? What it is? Secondly, among the lung cancer, they will ask you the uh, typing that, you know, they will mix up and they have to catch it. Third, paranuclistic feature, give, they will be given. Again, what type of lung cancer, you have to catch that one. Uh, fourthly, they will give you a um, scenario of a lung cancer. And in that case, you have to uh, gauge the right investigation. Like, are you going for a biopsy or are you going for a bronchoscopy? It depends on central or the peripheral. Right? This is the thing. Lung cancer treatment very hardly comes, mostly is chemo, radio, and some cases cancer is you know applicable. I haven't seen uh, lung cancer related treatment coming in MCXM. Okay. Rather, we found this one with the asbestos exposure. Now, asbestos is something related to restrictive lung disease, right? Um, then this restrictive lung disease, uh, which is can be related to asbestos exposure, which is indicating mesothelioma. Now, they give you one question like asbestos exposure and some other words are written and they're asking after this asbestos exposure, what is the main chance? Now, asbestos, if you remember in old house, like example, you know, um, I'm currently in UK right now. So the houses, these are like a 150 year old house actually. And they used to use asbestos and these that things long back. Then they start doing the painting and these things actually. So asbestos long back used to be very dangerous. Uh, so you're living in that house and, you know, as a product, asbestos is used. So people are more prone to lung cancer due to asbestos or what do you think? Mesothelioma. That's the MC question. After asbestos exposure, I mean, you need a long exposure of 10, 15 years. What do you think? What can be developed? I mean, more chance. Anything can develop, but one thing, it can be more chance. The answer, lung cancer. Mesothelioma is a very rare cancer. Mesothelioma will is a very rare cancer. All right? That's the thing. Question was asbestos exposure. I mean, asbestos exposure leading to lung cancer or mesothelioma more. Which one has more prevalence? Ex asbestos exposure. After asbestos exposure, which one has more prevalence? Lung cancer or mesothelioma? Answer is a lung cancer. More common. It's very clearly written here. Yeah. After <laughs> writing this, clear this question should not come. Okay. A few lines are written. Asbestos more common in lung cancer. I mean, you can just check our note. You will it will find it. X-ray showing ground glass appearance for asbestos, X-ray uh, lung cancer, coin on nodule, and X-ray mesothermia, plural thickening. So what are the X-ray finding of this different condition? Because we have seen this X-ray related question also coming. Actually. So the findings are also given in the this particular side, as you can see. Good. Okay. Yeah, you can find me in these social medias and this, that, and yeah. All right, great. So this is about the lung cancer. Is it clear to everyone about the lung cancer? My dear doctors, is it clear to everyone about the lung cancer? Okay, last but not the least, I can show you a CT scan, how it looks in the CT scan actually. Especially uh, we, after the lung cancer, we are getting into uh, this particular thing, mesothelioma. After lung cancer, we are getting into this particular thing, which is called the mesothelioma. I'm just switching the screen just for a second. All right. Hope you enjoyed that part, that note section. Yeah. Just taking a second, guys. Okay, so nothing much related to um, this thing, like uh, as we already shown with the lung cancer, this mesothelioma, many times it just came as a CT scan. Many times it just came as a CT scan. All right, now you can see the differences. This is a normal CT scan of the chest. It's a normal CT scan of the chest, as you all can see. Let me turn off myself so that you can see full. The normal CT scan. Any difference if you see, can you see in this particular side?
So you can see very clearly this section, which is supposed to be clean as normal, is plural thickening. Now, this is the thing the problem started. After many years of exposure to asbestos or chemical or many things, they developed this particular problem that we call as a mesothelioma. We call this thing what? We call this thing mesothelioma. So mesothelioma is a malignant and uh, which is exposed to asbestos. Asbestos, to asbestos. It can be associated with pain, dyspnea, and often can be related to the plural effusion. Now, a quick question: Is plural effusion is a uh, disease, or plural effusion is a symptom of indicating other diseases? What do you think? Just checking your understanding. Plural effusion, like you know, just go and I think read one time, like. What are the causes of exudative, transudative, plural effusion? And I'm not going to teach that one. I think I hope it's MBBS thing. Uh, what are the causes of exudative and transudative plural effusion? You can take note. If you forget, you can check. It's a sign that so recurrent plural effusion pressure can be presented with and you go underlying testing and rule out there can be mesothelioma. So you can initially do an X-ray. Same thing again. If you want to write what the, what the investigation for mesothelioma. Again, the same thing. Initially, X-ray. Initially, X-ray. Next is a CT scan. Final, you can go for biopsy. Final, you can go for the biopsy. Last question from mesothelioma. Is mesothelioma has a good prognosis or a bad prognosis? The mesothelioma has a very bad prognosis. So often treatment is palliative. I know. I hope you know what is palliative treatment. Investigation, X-ray, CT scan, biopsy. Same thing again, like same like the lung cancer, X-ray, CT scan, biopsy. Prognosis is very poor and it is a very rare cancer. Treatment is palliative. You don't have, tell the patient you don't have much time. Tell the patient you don't have much time. That's about the mesothelioma. Now, I have a picture related to <clears throat> Davidson actually. This is how it was given in a Davidson medicine, I remember. Plural effusion, and this is a plural effusion develop mesothelioma, like these are the part. You know, it's mainly they portray asbestos exposure. So asbestos exposure can be related to lung cancer. It can be related to mesothelioma. So this lung cancer also can be presented with plural effusion. Okay, that's that's all actually. Nothing much to add here, to be honest, actually. And the CT scan we are talking about, already I show you that one. Yeah, here is that CT scan. I'll hold here five seconds. Just have a look on that CT scan. I think it's a very clear and visible for this CT scan. Very clear and visible. Okay, done. Great, we need to move forward, guys. Yeah. So that's about the uh, lung cancer and the mesothelioma. It's just now uh, gone, and after that mesothelioma, uh, yes, something which I wanted to show you from my notes actually, and that thing will be pneumothorax coming up. Just taking a second, guys, just to bring out the note for pneumothorax, guys. Pneumothorax is not much well given in John Murtag. That's why we have to take a little help from the notes. Let me know in the comment section. Having note is helpful because we have introduced the note in last one year. Previously, we just used to tell things straight away from the John Murtag. Uh, having notes side by side, is it more helpful? I mean, maybe you can ask after a month, I think, you know. But, you know, you don't have to look forward to the best slides and this, that thing. You know, you just know other than your John Murtag, what you have to do now, right? I mean, you don't have to search things here and there, actually, yeah. Okay, now you see this pneumothorax slide, how it looks like. We all know about the pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is actually a topic related to emergency medicine, but I thought of, you know, again, a little bit till, because some doctors feel left over otherwise, actually. But it's a topic related to surgery class three, emergency surgery and medicine, you know, so it's a, like a combination class. Anyways, pneumothorax, this P, pneumo means air and 
air in the probability. If it's a hemothorax, there'll be blood. Uh, sometimes it can be associated with a condition name, frail chest. So after road traffic accident, these things can happen, but pneumothorax can also happen spontaneously, right? So this is the thing. If I ask you one thing, what is the main cause of pneumothorax? Answer in one line. Is it because of traumatic, idiopathic, uh, spontaneous, or uh, what do you think? Traumatic, idiopathic, spontaneous. Right according to John Mothaga. Final answer is a spontaneous. Spontaneous, guys. You know, well, let's check the Davidson percentages, spontaneous. Okay, now that's how the things are. This is the things you need to be careful in the main exam. You know, it looks easy, but always not that. Now coming to the pneumothorax, this particular part, already talking about the pneumothorax. So what happens in pneumothorax? So in pneumothorax, basically patient um, lack of breathing, actually. I mean, many times uh, the pneumothorax can be open, close, and tension. Now, what do you think which pneumothorax is most dangerous among all of them? The three types of pneumothorax, close, open, tension. Tension is very dangerous. It is so dangerous that your uh, apex beat and trachea is even shifted to the opposite side. Okay, we learned this thing in MPPS, trachea, apex beats, all this shifted. And all you need is just to release that extra air. My sir used to told, like, you know, he was professor, he passed away um, some two years back. He used to tell that, you know, there in their time, they used to use even pain hole, even in the village areas, actually. I mean, that type of, you know, thing, uh, his, you know, stories about the pneumothorax, actually. It is that emergency. So, you know, here you have needle, you just release that extra air from the lung, patient will be relieved and come back to normal, actually, very quickly. So this is the tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax insertion of the needle in the second intercostal space make sure you don't pierce the heart actually okay so that's the thing so tension uh, tension pneumothorax open pneumothorax closed pneumothorax all pneumothoraxes are dangerous actually now coming to the second part uh, of the pneumothorax we'll come back to this slide a little later uh, yeah okay these are all the things you need to know exactly about a pneumothorax. These are the all things uh, you need to know about the tension pneumothorax, actually. All right. So that is the thing, actually, about the tension pneumothorax, actually. Now, um, talking about the management of the pneumothorax. Management of the pneumothorax is like a, there will be lung collapse things as well. There will be lung collapse things as well in the pneumothorax. And the lung collapse things as well in the pneumothorax, as you all can see, uh, there is something called 25%. Okay, like if the percentage of the lung is 25%, focus on focus on class, guys. Please focus on class. Yeah. Uh, percentage like 25% collapse if it is there or not based on the that, the treatment is given actually. Based on that, the treatment is given. So if lung collapse less than 25% and no symptom observation. If 25%, but if there is symptom, so symptom is a main role play is doing here. So if the symptom is present, we go for drain. If radiolose is showing more than 25 or more than 25%, again a drain. We're talking about the chest drain. Chest drain is given in a fifth or sixth intercostal space, you know, for the releasing that extra air comes out, this goes away actually. So initially, for tension pneumothorax, we can insert the needle and later you can go for the chest strain. So chest strain is the outmost treatment later. You definitely need chest strain actually. Otherwise, again, tension pneumothorax or pneumothorax will develop. Clear everyone this thing? So this is something you need to memorize. Very, very important. This is something you need to memorize. This is very, very important. Now, AMC does a trick, actually. Like, they give exactly 25% because these things does not cover that answer. So, they said 25%. So, should I go for a chest strain or should I observe if it is given just 25%? Here, it is given above 25%. So, what is your take on that one? The answer is a 25 or above, actually. So, 25 or above, 25 or above, it is chest strain. Okay, it reaches that margin. So still it's a chest strain. Clear everyone? So they will try to trick you with this kind of thing. All right. They will be giving, giving you that percentage. Actually, you don't have to calculate, my dear. Okay, great. 
So 25%, they will straight away tell in the question, actually. There is a handbook question, guys. Don't get confused. It's a old concept. They were telling some with a 15% something. 15% um, going for drain or something. Ignore that one, actually. Follow the one I'm saying and what is given in the John Murtak here, okay? Great. All right. Guys, I mean, just follow whatever I'm saying here. will be more than enough, actually. All right. Coming to that part, what are the types of questions so far tested and let's get that directly you have your own thing respiratory thing if you, you want to learn more there is a guideline called zina guideline g-i-n-s zina guideline so extra thing you can learn from learn from uh, many guidelines and many things so it's a big field right people do five years training on respiratory actually all right so here please remember one thing we will be more focused on class and exam based do you want me to be more focused on the class base or do you want me more to teach about disease pathology mechanism and this that i think it's a combination would be good actually focusing more on the exam and what comes in exam that's why you are here otherwise there are so many types of you know youtube videos um, are available right i mean on a respiratory system and this that you could have seen that actually so shortcut to pass exam with making the class bit interesting so that class does not get bored actually so exam focus would be more okay actually i can see some people keep answering things you know you will be away from the exam thing actually you can clarify those things even while working in australia first focus on passing the exam there will be many options for you my dear all right okay coming to this part now talking about the pneumothorax how does the patient will feel patient will feel the chest discomfort patient will tell you i'm unable to breathe actually and you know patient will be brought to the emergency department correct and you will be the attending doctor who will put the stethoscope on the patient so in that case what type of sound are you expecting so clinical finding now it's a clinical finding what is the things will return now finding would be especially two areas there will be two areas yes first of all there can be silent chest good point someone said but other than that, you are also expecting sound as well. So sound will be reduced. Main important what is given in MC exam, reduced air entry on right side or left side. So you will understand, is it a right-sided pneumothorax or left-sided pneumothorax? Now, is it a clear that, you know, if I say reduced air entry on the right side, left side, is it 100% that it is a pneumothorax or can it be hemothorax as well? It can be hemothorax as well. Now I need, I need percussion for that. Now I do percussion and I found, you know, hyper resonant. Now, now I know this is a pneumothorax because the percussion node, are you expecting hyper resonant in case of hemothorax? Are you expecting a percussion node uh, hyper resonant? Answer is a no. So it would be dull. It would be dull in hemothorax be careful guys be careful in the exam about that one often you miss that one you see the word reduced air entry and you quickly take this thing as a pneumothorax please check for god's sake what is percussion notice given okay now coming to that one and hemothorax like uh, breathing sound reduced to the affected side but percussion would be dull both are very popular in the exam so you'll go for needle thoracostomy you know as you mentioned Treatment for, yeah, like, you know, needle thoracostomy, regular pneumothorax close open, we can give a chest strain, very simple chest strain, you know, in the fifth, sixth integral space, you go for a, you know, chest strain. Chest strain is ultimate that is required. Already the management is given from the last segment. This is how the management looks like. So is it more than 25, less than 25? You can handle that now. Now, there's another question that came. They give you a uh, spatial, they ask for a spatial suggestion. They give you everything, okay, this, that, this, that, and this is a pneumothorax. What do you suggest for the patient? Now, you know, after reading the whole question, you know, suddenly you will feel so much angry. Oh, I understood the question with so much things, and suddenly they're asking something else. So a lot of things will happen for this. So they'll ask you, what is the tip for the patient? Okay, so always you can check the last line as well. You know, sometime in the last line, already it is mentioned that it is a case of pneumothorax. Oh, I am, you know studying for a while i mean and checking this question very seriously what is the diagnosis suddenly at the end they told this is a pneumothorax and asking something reading the whole stem actually so uh, and they're asking something else that what is the suggestion for the patient now suggestion for the patient avoid smoking suggestion for the patient avoid ever air travel for three months which one is the best suggestion 
my dear you know you can check about the chest strain at your convenience from the wikipedia you know you don't need to know the procedure of the chest strain from me okay you can just google it or you can just go to youtube how to do a chest strain it's a water seal train actually chest train my dear i'm sure you did it in the internship right we all did it in intern life chest train okay focus on that one avoid air travel for three months that would be your answer rather than smoking here okay now thing is here about the radiology and they might give you also a radiology here actually about the pneumothorax they might also give you a radiology and uh, you need to see like, you know, the trachea apex bit shifted and make a diagnosis. So clear, I mean, how many ways pneumothorax can come? Is it clear to our respected doctors? How many different ways pneumothorax can come? I just give you a brief actually, okay? Is this exam specific things are good? Okay. Yeah, so these all things can come. Type, clinical feature, investigation management, DD, and... 25 percent related management and in future i'll teach you the frail chest management actually okay it will come with the emergency you know class actually don't worry coming back to john murtak again we finished lung cancer mesothelioma uh, we are almost like near to the end don't worry um something just coming up now which is called um yeah sarcoidosis it is okay Please open up page number 463 number page actually sarcoidosis we don't we don't have much time don't worry okay i i will try to finish in next three hours you know some doctors can be tried how we treat pneumothorax okay i'll tell you in the emergency class actually hemothorax is a part of as i said pneumothorax also is a part of our emergency medicines and surgery so the frail chest hemothorax pneumothorax this thing for now please just remember the pneumothorax all good great yeah let's focus on some of the remaining respiratory first actually okay already page number mentioned 460 always you can see the page number here i mean some people are with mobile i think you know and you know they are like half blind already you know <laughs> <laughs> we're using the mobile actually you know trying to search you know where is that this that yeah but if you have a laptop or desktop you'd have seen the full screen uh, how it is in front of me right now i can see everything very clearly okay coming to this particular part is a uh, 463 is the page now talking about sarcoidosis so talking about sarcoidosis can we say it's a multi-system disease my dear doctors, if I want to add something about sarcoidosis, can we say it's a multi-system disease? Yes, agreed. Mm, if it is a multi-system disease, so what different things are you looking for from sarcoidosis? So let me just bring out our sarcoidosis note for this section. I'm just taking again a one minute of time and you guys please keep documenting what else are you looking for for sarcoidosis please write me in the comment section please write me in the comment section it's a restrictive lung disease did we learn that earlier isn't it guys it's a <clears throat> restrictive lung disease what else okay so here's the page that came up yes so this one page um this is a note yes okay so this is a sarcoidosis node okay so this sarcoidosis node uh, yes skin lesion very well done yeah so skin layer well done bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy as i can see that that's why in the beginning there is a x-ray so sarcoidosis in the beginning i can see an x-ray and the x-ray is showing it's difficult to see from this x-ray guys i'm telling you a nice website name its name is um, radiopedia okay so like a wikipedia radiopedia so from the radiopedia you know you can see the um this x-rays actually yeah you can just search like a sarcoidosis radiopedia it, it will take you to the radiology you know high tech yeah so you can see them but here you can see small like bilateral hyaluronic lymphadenopathy number one finding for sarcoidosis other than it is a restrictive lung disease if it is a restrictive lung disease can we say uh, there would be 
FEV1, FVC ratio would be changed because it's a restrictive lung disease. What do you think, guys? So residual volume is increased, total lung capacity increased, FEV1, FVC ratio also increased. Okay. Now coming to a few things like something we called, uh, as you can see here, in this particular part, unique feature, bilateral hyaline lymphadenopathy. This is called unique feature, bilateral hyaline lymphadenopathy, a very popular skin lesion, uh, erythema nodosum, multi-system involved lung, eye, heart, liver, skin. So this particular thing can also, also can be um, definitely involved, including eye, there can be uvitis. And you can see this legs has a lesion. Did you know what picture this is belong to? This leg, which is having some lesion, what is this belong to? So this one is a nothing but erythema nodosum. Very popular in the exam, they will ask you about this. Coming to that one, a very popular thing in the is a investigation related to sarcoidosis, which is already a restrictive lung disease, but whatever it is, we go for a X-ray, that's fine, actually. X-ray is a initial number one. Then as a supporting, please note, this is a tricky part compared to the other uh, respiratory diseases. We go for a AC level and calcium level. So these both things can be raised. Some biochemical marker that can be raised in sarcoidosis. So AC level raised and calcium level can be raised. Okay, please remember this thing for the exam. And also, other than that, it's the basic x-ray, then a CT scan, and that's in biopsy. Now, where to take the biopsy? That is again a tricky for sarcoidosis. Like, of course, it's from lung biopsy. But in John Murtak, it was also mentioned, you can also take skin biopsy. You can also take skin biopsy as well. Confirmatory DFT, good question. It's a biopsy either from the lung or the skin, but diagnosis, yeah. Physical examination, it will be mostly unremarkable. Rarely, because it's a restrictive lung disease, you will find some of the uh, inspiratory crackle. Clear, guys? Because it's a sarcoidosis, you might find inspiratory crackle. Yeah, because it's a restrictive lung disease, restrictive lung disease, residual volume, total lung capacity. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, that thing will be decreased because it's a restrictive, right? Obstructive lung diseases, that's a different. And restricted lung disease, yeah, I already mentioned that one, actually. Yeah, it's a slipping slip of tongue, don't worry. All right. Everything is kind of like decreased. Everything is kind of like decreased in the restrictive lung diseases. All right, guys. Okay, so talking about that one, let's see if I have something. I think I have a Davidson chart to show you. Okay, so here is a nice Davidson chart, which I'm going to show you now. Have you seen this thing in Davidson in past? In this particular chart I used to like a lot. This particular one I used to like a lot. Yeah, I'm sure like Cushing one I liked, then this uh, sarcoidosis one, like a eye involvement, multi-system involvement, this, you know, foot, sorry, leg picture of erythema nodosum, organ involvement, and bilateral lung involvement, hyaline lymphadenopathy, and eye involvement. Okay, so these are particular for the sarcoidosis. These are particular things for sarcoidosis. More clear now, guys? I mean, can you start imagining what systems are even involved now after seeing the pictures? I hope that's a yes. Great. So coming back to John Murtak, now uh, multi-system involvement. Why I said multi-system involvement? Can you imagine now everything? Like, you know, which organ, this, that, which I just now shown? Yes. Then you can also remember our notes. What are the exact important thing? And yes, um, you need biopsy, definitely. Initial X-ray, like CT, then this biopsy. But remember about the AC and the calcium level a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you can give the treatment and... Um, and Definitely, uh, you can treat with the steroid and all these things is necessary. So steroid treatment, this is like mentioned. Interstitial lung disease, I never found coming, uh, but it's also like a chronic disease, like eosinophil level and this that would be involved. I mean, I didn't mark it because never seen coming in that way. Okay, so that's, that's about the um, sarcoidosis actually. Now, the, after that one, um, as a coming up, is a page number, uh, I mean, I would ask you to go to 393 page pneumonia. I might need 10 minutes more uh, for this pneumonia things actually. Stay with me guys. So, and our next topic is a pneumonia here.
393. Here is your, our page number. So let me tell you from pneumonia, um, question does test it in MC. Uh, let me tell you. So we have done with the obstructive, restrictive, and now we are doing an infection part. So infection part includes this pneumonia and the lung abscesses. Pneumonia and the lung abscesses. Now, if I ask you, name the big three culprits that's causing the pneumonia. I'm taking out the screen so that you don't see and tell. What are the three big three culprits that is causing pneumonia? I asked you something, guys. Please participate. Okay, hemophilus influenza. Well done. Step pneumonia. Yes, well done. Big three, these are called, right? Strep, microplasma. Yes, well done. Well done. So these are some of the big three. Now, I would a little bit modify that one. And let's, from now on, I mean, those are the big three commonest one. I mean, these are the commonest one in adult. Other than age was, let's try remember as well. Example, especially for neonates, remember as a bell, B-E-L. Okay. Now this bell thing, what microorganism involved here? So this bell thing, beta hemolytic streptococcus, E for E. coli, and L for Listeria. So you please remember them. So for neonates or infants, it's often the thing is bell, B-E-L. Beta hemolytic streptococcus, E. coli, and Listeria. So these are particular thing are for the infant or neonates actually. Then the children, adults, I mean, already you can see, just, just remember that additional word actually. Um, X-ray will have consolidation, right? Sometimes they can give you a middle of consolidation, whole lung consolidation, one, uh, one, of course, most cases, one side that is affected. So that side consolidation or infection uh, would be there, actually. This is how the things are, actually. Okay. Um, next thing, what you can see, can anyone guess what guideline picture is this? You know, I mean, if anyone from previous batch, they can also guess. You know, this type of box type of guidelines are belong to which particular website? Well done. This is the R RCH guideline. So anything related to kids, I mean, after medicine, we'll teach the pediatrics. So we will use that RCH guideline more. But during medicine, also a lot of topics like pneumonia is more confined to kids, right? It's a kid's topic, but we are teaching it here because we're going through respiratory. So the management in pneumonia in a more than one year child, like this is how the presentation and this is how the treatment updated treatment. So oral amoxicillin and this, that particular things have been mentioned. Okay. So just check it one time. It's already in our note section, medicine, respiratory, and the pneumonia. Okay. Last but not the least, um, particular microorganism can be related to particulars, like hemophilus, more affinity to like COPD, Klebsiella more related to alcohol abscess. All right. Legionella more related to contaminated water. Mm, mycoplasma more in the youngs. Anaerobes uh, more when poor dentition can develop this pneumonia or lung abscess, like applicable for both actually. Okay, so remember this one particularly as a specific microorganism causing specific disease. Okay, this one you have to memorize later. It's nothing my function to add. Uh, what I can add is about uh, this thing, hospital admission, but before that one, what are some of the clinical features of pneumonia. What do you think, my dear doctors? What are some of the clinical features related to pneumonia? It's an infection, right? It's an infection. You remember in pathology, we used to learn, you know, rubor tumor, calor, dolor, functionalia, like, you know, five sign of, you know, inflammation, right? So, if we say rubber, rubber means redness, like so, uh, of course, this redness we can't see from outside, but inside there'll be redness. Rubber, uh, tumor swelling, lung would be swelled up. 
reward you more calor then this would be pain already pain would be there pleuritic chest pain then dolor i mean that is the temperature already there would be the fever and functionalia means loss of function so this already uh, can't breathe properly actually can't breathe properly so that's all related to so there there will be fever there will be cough there will be breathlessness these all are related to and please note always this um, pneumonia fever are you expecting a general fever because every condition comes with a fever are you expecting high fever or low grade fever a quick quick question to you guys are you expecting we are expecting now i'll give you half mark for that actually i'll give you half mark for that answer is both actually high grade fever for typical pneumonia but there is another one atypical pneumonia so atypical pneumonia belongs to low grade fever because mostly by the viruses so anything which is viral low grade fever so be careful guys about that one one more particular thing typical community acquired pneumonia i mean your initial symptom can be um, a lot and then there will be also extra finding okay extra findings can be rather less sometimes in typical pneumonia but if we talk about atypical pneumonia is there anything difference with typical pneumonia answer is a yes first of all they have low grade symptom and they have less clinical feature but when you do the x ray the x ray finding is even more prominent than the clinical finding so please take a note a special note of today for um this type of pneumonia or like a atypical pneumonia less clinical less clinical finding more radiological finding less clinical finding but more radiological finding for atypical pneumonia atypical pneumonia so here the microorganism this that things are given um, yeah test you need x ray you, you need you know sputum culture blood culture all these things you will be needed definitely and pneumonia can lead to lot of type of complication including please mark this one emphysema please mark because emphysema related pneumonia complication question has been tested in past please mark this one emphysema separately you know even among the uh, complication emphysema is also quite common actually and emphysema is the only one i have seen as a uh, complication uh, coming to the exam okay very important that you know this information so please separately mark this one all right okay they just told about the same thing the clinical feature this that and some of the treatments so you have to remember uh, especially how to differentiate mild moderate severe pneumonia mild moderate even though it's related to a bit pediatric topic but that's okay so mild moderate severe uh, pneumonia severe pneumonia is often like you know we can differentiate by carp 65 this is something we were telling like what is the situation of the patient have you ever have about have heard about this thing carb 65 anyone definitely it's a yes like carb 65 i think it's it's more modified now even to be honest okay carb or corb nowadays i think it is said corb 65 i guess but we used to remember this carb 65 since very long in our early days now confusion uremia respiratory rate blood pressure so all this thing carries point and 65 so if 0 or 1 it's can be treated at home very simple give simple amoxicillin i repeat simple amoxicillin can be treated at home then two i mean you know it no hospital supervised so if out of them two features then hospital uh, short stay in patient or hospital but three or more highly recommended patient your patient might need hospital definitely and uh four or five required icu so three is hospitalized already in the hospital four or five require icu okay clear everyone i'm just holding here five ten seconds so that you get a clear view one two three these are the features and four or five definitely means all feature are present patient's condition very bad take the patient to icu this is how we differentiate this is how we differentiate yeah now it is also called corp rather than carb so anything you remember it's fine so you can see one thing amoxicillin for mild this is latest john murtag benzyl penicillin for moderate or ceftriaxone cef can be used and you can see here cefotaxime or ceftriaxone this is the treatment for severe pneumonia Now, always cross check the treatment with the latest guidelines yeah
this note sometimes the treatment uh, thing in the child cases also can be a little different it's not always the same always actually so guys uh, did you have a clear idea about the pneumonia now yeah this is again the particular microorganism and and uh, example uh, from a water source legionella can develop yeah uh, from a abscess, alcoholism, klebsiella, already mentioned this one. Let's check it one time from our notes. Uh, we'll be fine. All right. So coming back to pneumonia part again, actually. So pneumonia, I mean, if we recapitulate, you learn about the microorganism, community acquired pneumonia is the typical pneumonia. There is atypical pneumonia also. You need to keep it in mind. Yes. What is the treatment for atypical pneumonia, guys? I'll finish with that note here. What is the treatment for atypical pneumonia? Jan, just one drug you have to tell. Answer is a, according to the latest book. According to latest book, azithromycin. Now, that is the thing I'm telling, why you need the latest book, azithromycin. Previously, even six, you know, seventh edition or sixth edition, I think it was uh, doxycycline. I think from seventh, it has been changed. Previously, from six, it was doxy. Then I think seventh, it came azith, still is azith. Okay, so azith is the priority, azithromycin. Cool. All good, guys, so far. Okay. So I think uh, these are the topics. So whenever you learn the uh, pneumonia, learn about the atypical and typical separately. Please take note from the pneumonia 393 page. I mean, whatever you have that typical and atypical separately will learn the managements. Okay. To this last topic, uh, see typical <laughs> tuberculosis. Uh, let me just tell you in one minute. In typical tuberculosis, you just need to participate with me, guys. Typical tuberculosis, pulmonary tuberculosis. Now, pulmonary tuberculosis, tell me the clinical feature of pulmonary tuberculosis. I think everyone knows about the pulmonary tuberculosis. Patient will have what features in, in pulmonary tuberculosis? Yeah. So, uh, cough for more than, you know, more than two weeks of duration. More than two weeks duration, cough can be pertussis as well. For kids' cases, we'll talk about that one. Then, uh, again, weight loss, night sweat. Uh, yeah, well done, guys. Uh, elevated temperature, evening rising of the temperature. Yeah, well done, guys. Weight loss can be there as well. Loss of appetite. So, these all are typical for pulmonary tuberculosis. Whenever you learn TB, just check your MBBS notes. Also, one time, just check the intestinal tuberculosis, you know. Um, and there's another word was, what was that? POTS disease. I mean, I haven't seen this thing coming, neither pulmonary tuberculosis, intestinal tuberculosis, or POTS disease. Just check whatever note you have for pulmonary tuberculosis, whatever you learned earlier, just check it one time. TB comes very less. How TB comes? Mostly they give, they go, someone went to the, you know, Asian countries and after coming back, they develop these particular features. After, so an immigrant or an immigrant newly came in Australia, they have some feature of low-grade fever, persistent cough more than two weeks. So this is how the most cases, the question comes for tuberculosis in AMC exam. Okay, mostly immigrant, mostly immigrant actually. All right, so this is how the thing came. But another question which um, I found is quite useful is a latent TB. Now, um, this I'm going to you. Okay, before going to the latent TB, what are the drugs used in tuberculosis? I'm just adding this one so that, you know, you check later. There's, you know, four set of drug that is that has been used, right? Yeah, HRZD. I mean, all, I'm sure all of you know about it, this anti-tubercular drug. Yeah, so anything, I think you just check from Davidson, you just check from anything, anti-tubercular drug. These are the drug names, you know. I'm just 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 revising with you guys, actually. Like, I stood near the rifampicin. I'm all drugs initially given for two months, and later, isoniazide and rifampicin that continues most of these drugs most of this drug can lead to liver related issues do you agree with me most of this drug related to liver related issues yes and apart from that one most of them are related to uh, what was that enzyme induction agreed with me most of them can related to enzyme induction that means it interacts with some other drugs function as well okay so this is two of the thing 
other than this isoniazide can lead to peripheral neuropathy agreed guys isoniazide can lead to peripheral neuropathy like liver problem is common in all of them other than that isoniazide peripheral neuropathy rivampicin orange color urine and hepatitis i mean already mentioned liver problem all of them can cause pyrazinamide other than liver problem they can lead to gout problem agreed pyrazinamide other than the liver problem they can lead to gout problem yeah and last but not the least ethambutal other than the liver problem what problem it can cause now you should tell that one by its name the hint is there e for i well done very well done e for i ethambutal can lead to retrobulbar neuritis or eye related problem okay so these are the now apart from this type of uh, management like a two month regimen and then another four month regimen have you seen your professor using uh, isoniazide for six months of no reason have you seen this thing in the world that um this maybe it's tb i think you know they, they become sure after doing other tests now i think it's a tb let's go for a suspected tb and uh, treatment like isoniazid artemether this kind of thing they have been using for a another six months or a nine month period right just one drug not too many drugs and surprisingly there were response as well Okay, surprisingly, there are response as well, actually. And now, this TB, can we say as a latent TB? This TB, can we say as a latent TB? Yes, definitely, I think we can. So, a nine-month isoniazide thing can be used. I'm going to show you a, a chart of the latent TB, as you all can see, latent tuberculosis. Yeah, so you need to take a picture. I think it's all the, in, the, in the note section, but it's okay. You can, some of them just came for a trial class, actually. They might not be with us, actually. You can just take a screenshot of this one. You know, this one you have to, this is taken from RACGP. Where? RACGP. So consider TB and the symptoms and no symptoms is given. Now, there's a matter of confusion for some people to understand the question. Now, if it is given, the person has cough for more than two weeks is that a symptomatic case or is that a symptomatic case now just think logically then i will move forward from here a person who is having cough for more than two weeks will he consider that one as a symptomatic case or a symptomatic case you remember long back those of you who are in bangladesh you remember there were a lot of miking that you know more than two weeks cough you know, advertise was there that two weeks cough, they, you know, go to a doctor to see TB, things like that. So it's a symptom, actually. It's a symptomatic case, actually. All right. Like maybe small fever, that's a symptomatic thing. But, you know, when you are having cough for more than two weeks, it's a symptomatic. Now, question is, um, you do x-ray in a symptomatic case and you find inconclusive finding. I repeat, a symptomatic case, you do x-ray, x-ray seems inconclusive, what to do next? You give isoniazide for nine months or you do sputum culture? Quick question. Or AFB culture, yes. Uh, by the way, my empty Montux test is also inconclusive. X-ray and Montux test, both are inconclusive. Now, are you going for a sputum or are you going for a further, you know, think as a latent TV and go for a treatment? Answer is a, we'll go for a sputum culture because this person has cough for more than two weeks. So you need to do the confirmatory test, right? So you need to go for the confirmatory test. That is the simple, like a sputum culture or FP culture. You have to do it actually, if it's a, so, because there might be chance of active TB in that person. Clear now? So it's put on for AP in culture, so that would be important for you. If the cough thing is not mentioned, if it is mentioned there is no vaccination history and patient has a little fever and asymptomatic, in that case, you know, uh, expert about appropriate treatment, isoniazide for nine months it can be. Isoniazide for nine months it can be. Clear now, guys? Latent TB. Please make sure your question is not active TV. Please make sure your question is actually Latin TV. Clear now how the question came? Next day, we'll see that question definitely. Next day, we'll see that question definitely. It's an easy one. Asymptomatic, symptomatic. Asymptomatic, how to understand? Uh, it will remain asymptomatic, of course, or maybe little fever or this, that. Symptomatic, I mean to say the cough will be present. The cough will be present more than two weeks. If it is there, 
count it as an active TB, count it as a symptomatic TB. In that case, you do whatever test it is required, including the sputum culture. Clear now? Yeah, I hope so. As soon as I it's given for nine months as for Latin TB. Yeah, so a few things are given here. You can also have a quick look in, in the John Murtag as well. You can have a quick look in John Murtag as well. Yeah, but the, yeah, here is the Latin TV, page number 185. Page number 185, go and read more about the Latin TV. Go and read more about the Latin TV and they see isoniazide for six to nine months. Isoniazide for six to nine months. Latin TV, more common in children it can be who coming from the developing countries. Okay, that is the thing. So as I said, guys, uh, pulmonary TB, I just revised with you guys kind of, but it's nothing much actually. Pulmonary TB, that must, that didn't come. So better you just for safety, read about pulmonary TB, intestinal TB, pots disease, that vertebral TB, just for safety. I didn't see those things coming. What I have seen coming is a latent TB in the exam. Okay, so that's the main thing. Uh, I think these are the particular things and other things, you know, we can see in the recall classes. Uh, thanks for staying with me today. If there is something extra, I mean, definitely we'll bring those in the recall classes. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave us or drop us a message, actually, you know, for if you need any admission things, because we have, I think, 75% admissions are done already. Uh, my officials will answer you back today. Today, I might be a little tired. Uh, only those have already taken admission. I'll just send the materials quickly in next 10, 15 minutes. And um, then, you know, I'll be available from tomorrow in that case, actually. So thank you so much, guys, for your attention. One more thing before we left. Uh, yeah, so I think that's the end actually for today's class. Thank you so much, I think.